What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another week of the KCM. We've got Zerg versus Protoss to start us off here. Game number one on Citadel. Let's jump right in. Bringing up the lineup here, and it's looking a little bit like Protoss has given up or something here, Shun. Look at this. Crazy mm -hmm. lineup that they put together today. Um, such a, yeah. a turnaround from last uh, season. Right? It's kind of yeah, a little, a little bit shocking. Like usually you'll see like one or one name thrown in there as like a kind of like yeah, we'll give this guy some stage time. But this time we've got like three names just thrown to the wall and see what sticks. And we even got the Dino Toss himself, Stork, like an absolute fossil of a player. But still, I'm very happy to see him. He's the original King of Silver. Um, I love this guy. Like, he's such an impressive... He used to be known for his carrier control, and this is a map where, unfortunately, he's not... Um, is, sorry, this is a, a matchup where he might get some games against Terran players, so hopefully we'll see some carrier action from him later on. And Saxry himself, uh, he's a really good standard Zerg versus Terran player, but he's not so good in ZVP and ZVZ, so... We'll have to see how he fares against Lexa Motive. Yeah, he has the worst PvP win rate in ASL out of any of the players. So, um, definitely struggling in that matchup. CVP. Oh, sorry, CVP, yeah. Um, and I don't want to disrespect any of these Protoss players. I think Motive is fantastic. YSC brings us some great games here and there. But uh, just compared to, like, look at this Terran lineup. It's just insane. Royal Light Sharp, these are... You know, ASL finalists, ASL uh, people that we expect to be in, you know, deep in the ASL every season, um, potentially winning that. So uh, it's just a, a bit shocking to see YC Stork Motive after last season where we had, you know, Mini Snow uh, and Bisu pretty much every week. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's like the uh, the OG apes have gone back into the jungle to like you know work out a little bit and like figure some stuff out so they can you know figure out the complicated puzzles and come back to it you know with new vigor or something and give these other guys a chance to shine who have been training waiting in the wings for their turn. Or maybe they uh, got frustrated after, um, you know, putting out so many great weeks and then they still have a tough time in the finals. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe. We've got motive here. Starting out with a gateway first, sending the first zealot across that map. It is a uh, overpool here from Saxory, so he's going to have some lings out pretty soon to be able to deal with that zealot. But he's having a hard time finding a spot to throw down this third hatchery just yet. He doesn't have the money for it, uh, as he started some lings here, but. He does want to get that hatchery down pretty soon, and the Zealot is going to find this drone. Can he actually get any hits? No. That drone will retreat here towards the main, but he does need to find a location for this pretty soon. Lings are going to come out. Drone coming in to see mm. the natural here. Doesn't see the Nexus, but he has all the information that he needs. That's going to head back home. Here comes that drone. Where's the Zealot? Oh, it went all the way back home. Yeah, it, it's kind of wise for him to send the Zealot home here because, I mean, if he does go, like, fast into six lings, that can get surrounded and picked off very easily. And, and with going gateway first, the last thing you want to do... Oh, nice catch on this other scouting probes. Uh, Motive did send out an additional um, scouting probe, but that gets taken out. So now both scouting probes are down, so a little bit of a hit to his economy from that investment. And now he's completely in the dark still, and uh, there's enough speedlings out, or will be speedlings out, I imagine, that he will not be able to get any kind of intel for a long time. So, yeah, he's going to be completely in the dark. He doesn't know if this is um, going to be like a two-hatch uh, Muta fast tech play or what. He's going to be a three-hatch Hydra. He's going to have no idea about that. So a little bit of a win here for Saxory in the early game. Well, Saxory pulled off of gas for a little bit there, but he does start the lair. Severinus core is already on the way. Um, building those eight lings early on definitely slowed down his lair a bit. Is he going to have that in time to uh, deal with the Corsairs as they come out? Or is this going to be a little bit of a problem? I don't think we started a forge, or we did start one in the main base, I guess. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it could line up to where he's going to have to sacrifice one or two overlords, but I don't think it's going to be too significant. I think it'll still line up nicely. It's just going to be a matter of, is he going to try and invest in Mutalisks to deal with a, a, the, the Zealot timing, or is he going to just use that as, to make four Scourge and go into six? Oh, he gets a few speedlings in the wall here. It's actually pretty big, because now he can get into the main base, see the timing of everything, and harass the gas mining of Motive as well. Two probes already dead on that gas. is really big damage. Ooh, three probes go down. This this is a big mistake for Motive. He really didn't want to be losing that gateway, but I don't think it was even going to go down before the cannon finished there. Um, he comes out, doesn't pull the probes in time to block this, and now he's losing a lot in his main base. He's going to lose another probe here. The Lings are still going to survive. Looks like that one might go down. No, it stays alive here. Three kills on that singular Ling, and this is getting really, really bad now for Motive. Um, the investment here of getting Ling speed and eight Lings before going into a lair, it's actually paying off here. I thought it was going to really hinder uh, Saxory, but it's working out beautifully for him in this game. Yes, it, uh, the fact that Motive was so greedy in delaying that cannon, he went for the core first in the wall. So actually identified that and punished it quite quite adeptly, I have to say. And the, the control has been pretty phenomenal from Saxory, playing almost like 500 APM consistently, controlling those links while squeezing out drones. He's got pretty good drone saturation across these three bases. Now additional hatcheries starting to be made. So this is by no means like a, uh, a maneuver to win the game right, ne right here, right now. This is simply just giving him a huge economic lead over Motive. He's got so many drones popping out right now and motive so I had quite a few probes killed and was distracted for quite a significant amount of time saxory adding on more hatches now his economy is looking good that first corsair is heading across the map to find out if there is a hydralis bust inbound he's gonna see that no there was indeed a lair here and that extra cannon will help him to deflect any ling run buys but it's not necessary for uh, a hydralis bust here just a bit of extra defense that motive didn't necessarily need but here comes those links they're gonna try and run by two cannons it's a lot of defense you're gonna lose most of your links so he does back away here the threat is real though motive here yeah. moving across the map now with what's this six zealots will he make uh, mutas to counter that or is he just going to stick uh, with Hydra and Ling here to, to deal with this uh, first attack. Oh man, if he picks off this Corsair. Oh! oh. Scourge was like so right close. inside that yeah. Corsair there for a moment. Giggity, giggity. Yeah, um, I was actually kind of surprised that that didn't connect there. And um, th th that was the big question I was asking myself earlier was, will he go for Mutalisks here? And he is, he is going for Mutalisks. So it's going to be like the five Muta play to deal with these Zealots on cleanup on R5 while trying to get the intercept with another pair of Scourge. He is so far locking out two connections, but on separate scores, might get two kills here. Not quite. Does get one of the Corsairs down and injures the other one, though. So still a really good trade there for Saxory, reducing that Corsair count. And they're doing a pretty good job of drone doing, but so many drones actually to go down to the Zealots. So I think about three or four drones maybe gone down to that attack so not not the, the most terrible of compensations for motive but overall this is still heavily favoring saxory saxory can just fully drone up now from this position after picking off a corsair um and finishing all of those zealots he has so much leeway here to just do whatever he wants and i imagine what he wants to do is immediately get up into uh six hatch hydra production Trying to snipe a probe here and there, and he's actually forcing the probes off the gas for now. But as soon as he pulls out here, everything will go back to normal in motive space. There's the Templar ar archives to begin uh, moving towards that next layer of tech. But motive, I mean, he's not going to be able to put on any pressure for quite some time. Saxory can do whatever he wants. Yeah, and he's going to churn out like six hatch hydro worth of production. If he, That's like the bare minimal. And I, in these cross map positions against Zealot Templar going pure hydra, you'd be able to just like keep microing back over and over again and just keep baiting out storms. And it would just be too much value for Saxory. We may not even see that. We may see like instead like a bit of an Ogaza commitment. We might see a few more muters out here. It's, there's quite a ha handful of uh, Scourge already being made, but yeah, I don't think he's going to commit to like anything crazy in terms of offense. He's just going to maybe consider the possibility of getting like 10 muters to snipe High Templars before going in with the Hydras, or he's just going to stay with what he's got now and just pump pure, pure Hydra right now. Excellent wall in here from Saxory at the natural. Uh, if you're wondering what's the best wall in uh, for this map, 
uh, in that position for Zerg. This is this is definitely it. Only one location that the Zealots can get through, and with a couple of lings there, he can block out a lot of those. Uh, managing to hold on with just one sunken at each base. Generally, when you go for this uh, five mutilist play, you end up building two sunkens, but he's managed to skimp. Uh, on those extra static defenses and now he's gonna maybe come in here for some snipes no he takes a look at those templar just backs away more hydras popping out here is it time for a fourth base from sax or is he just going to you know come over here and try to deny the third of motive well there's, there's no real need for the fourth base since we've still got him on two bases we can make the we can make the hatchery on location but we probably wouldn't saturate drones onto that fourth base yet we'll probably be making only yeah he's gonna make the hatchery on location but i doubt he'll saturate that base for a little bit of time he's gonna just care about pumping pure units for the time being make sure he's in like full battle zerg mode so he can combat anything that motive can throw at him right now and then once we we feel more secure we've won a battle we've secured a contain then we're gonna like saturate that base with a lot of drones well, let's watch the gas count here from Saxtry. It's at 800 and it's starting to dip down a little bit. If that's going into Lurkers, then maybe he will end up saturating that base. That's around the time when uh, the droning is actually possible, right? Is when you're switching into that Lurker tech. Yeah. And then you can, you'll have like a glut of minerals. You can just throw that into a bunch of drones. And at the same time, you know, you've still, you've got a very good defensive position. Wow, a whole lot of drones wow. popping out here without going into the lurkers first. Wonder if this is gonna end up working out. Oof. Just lost, lost all of the scourge there. Uh, trying to get a decent surround coming in from multiple angles, but it ends up working out perfectly for motive. He doesn't take a single hit. And the mutas here are actually gonna set up for a backstab, uh, hoping that maybe the uh, Corsairs of Motive will go across the map, and then he can come in and try to snipe some Templar. He's going for it right now, but the Corsairs are right here. He gets one Templar, but I think that's it. Just one. Pretty rough for the five Mutas there. Yeah, I mean, Sakshi might be in a bit of a weird position if Motive was more aggressive right now and trying to set up for a two-base timing, but he's not. He just wants to take a third base, so this actually works out really well for Sakshi being this greedy going into the, the full drone situation before even making Lurkers. He's got so many Hydras now, he can just like have like seven Hydra, um, seven Hatch Hydra worth of production and maybe try and set up a play for sandwiching this army at the six o'clock location and pick off some of these critical high gas units. There's a few too many Templar here, a few too many Storms to try and take this fight with your hydra but uh if you just back up and don't allow the templar to get in range of the big groups of hydras and pick away at the units at the periphery of the battle um it can still go very well for you he uh, doesn't take the full engagement here continuously backing away you can see he's just right at the edge of where the storm can be thrown down here for motive and picks off a few zealots here and there while switching into a big glut of lurkers Four bases is where Saxory is going to sit for now. His Corsair is looking for some damage here uh, in each of these bases. I like where Saxory's head, head is at, having these uh, Hydras uh, at a rally point outside the base and then just having the Overlords here. It really uh, does a good job of preventing DTs from getting into that location while also having the Hydras, you know, not in the base uh, in a position that's, uh, you know, not readily accessible. Um, they can just instantly be brought forward to... to assist or reinforce the position uh Saxory sending a lot of lurkers across the map right now that's a big group he's got to make sure not to burrow them on top of each other though look at how tightly these are packed if there was a storm yeah. there these would be absolutely eviscerated but um i mean he's got to unburrow gotta get out of here okay there we go he will unburrow gotta spread those out a little bit better here Saxory. Yeah, just a few good storms would have ended all those lurkers. And Saki's a very good macro player, but not so good at these like finer uh, adjustments. So he needs to get more on top of that. He's starting to spread out his lurkers now. Uh, still a few of them uh, will be doubled up though, making it a little bit easier for Motive to storm through, but doesn't want to take the fight just yet. Instead, just um, comfortable in expanding, taking his fourth base and trying to get his own production going to try and combat Saxory. who's in a, a monstrous position already, going into Hive, already on four bases, taking the top left corner as well. He's going to be throwing down 
uh, more and more macro hatcheries as we progress to the point where he's got about 10 hatcheries of production. He's been an absolute beast for most of the contemporary. So he needs his own fourth base as well. Beautiful storms going down to try and blank it and force back those hard just actually doing a pretty good job of staying out of them for the majority of it though. And he has such an overwhelming uh, cluster of units that he's able to kind of like force Moe back for a moment. Here comes Moe again, getting not really the greatest of storms to be honest with you. And if he's still, oh, that's a pretty good one. So with just one or two good storms, he might have been able to start to get some cost efficient trades here. But sachary has got so many units waiting at his rally point that he would never break through. He just needs to get some kind of efficiency going, but he wasn't really getting that. I would say overall the trades are still kind of going in Sachary's favor. So Sachary's army is going to get more and more Ling heavy here as we go forward because his gas count isn't that high. He's only on three gases right now. That fourth base only providing additional minerals is going to go mostly into those Ling uh, and that higher Ling count. Most of the gas right now is going to be going into just a few Hydras and uh, a whole lot of Lurkers. So uh, Saxory having all of those Lings, he's going to be looking for big surrounds here and defending these Lurkers heavily with his Ling count. He hasn't brought any forward just yet. Oh, big storm on the left-hand side there, but the Lurkers are getting really great spines here. Here comes the Lings now from the right-hand side. Can he surround and finish off this army? This is so many units. Scourge coming up, Lurkers coming up, a lot of great uh, damage from those storms, but full retreat here right now is motive. Uh, more Lurkers are, or excuse me, more Templar are going to come up, getting a great storm there. Saxory is starting to kind of bunch up here as he continues to chase this, but he's still got a lot of forces. Oh, these Lurkers on the right-hand side getting absolutely destroyed by just a couple of storms. Dragoons are continuing to retreat into more and more reinforcements here from uh, Motive. Great snipes on some of these observers, but I don't think he'll get too much more done here. Saxory going to have to back off, try to keep this base in the top left alive. And Moe have got two Zelts punching away at the hatchery in the top left, but they may get dealt with soon. Meanwhile, the supply is currently pretty even, which is very favorite to the Zerg player in these situations. As long as he's trading with like 40 to 50% efficiency, he's going to be in a marvelous position. Uh, yeah, he's just now dealing with this uh, cleanup in the top left, so won't be losing this hatchery as well, critically. Has another base going in the bottom right, natural expansion. And Moe is just biting off more than he can chew in this game, unfortunately. And it's just an absolute flood of units coming across the map. It's almost Sauron Zerg esque in the mid game absolute like devastating position to be in as pro so finally he's starting to come out 10 supply ahead and has warded off the attacks for now still has this four base worth economy going for him a few cannons being thrown down there but now here come the defilers here comes going to be the dark swarms and eventually the plagues which will spell even further disaster for him unreal that saxory still had 1500 minerals uh with the amount of macro that he was pumping out just insane amounts of production here. Could even use to add on a couple more hatches, and he will. Another hatch there at the fourth base. Another hatch in the top left. He's going to ramp up this production even further as those defilers hit the field. Lings are going to become stronger and stronger here. Triple upgrades. Cranking away. Saxory's macro just about unrivaled. Uh, especially by Motive, who's struggling to get above that 150 supply mark. Um, he is on four bases, and Protoss can fight on four bases for quite some time. He's got a lot of uh, leeway here before he needs that fifth base, but he's already moving towards taking that. And I'm not sure that Saxer can deny this. He is going to secure the top left, maybe even start to spread out down to the bottom right as well, while Motive is focusing his attention over here on the center left and over here in the top uh, left where Saxer has that fresh base. Yeah, well, this is going to be Motive's lane of attack for quite some time, I think. So it kind of does make, make sense to expand towards your opponent if you are going to be utilizing this vector of attack. Uh, it looks like he's coming out into the center of the map and some units running by on the left to be a little bit annoying here. But those links should be dealt with uh, soon enough. But yeah, with the plagues coming out and the dark swarm to hold these positions, I don't know how Motive is going to break through anytime soon. Uh, I think it's a little bit of a mistake to come out of a beautiful plague on those goons as well, softening those up to be chomped up later. The, the chili sauce will make those taste even better and whatever that blue goo tastes like inside yeah that must taste nice right like to a zerg seeing all that blue goo just like gush out like that that must be a treat i was doing a great job here fighting the goon army it's time to switch up that tech it's uh temp mass templar time here with lots of zealots and maybe even some reavers coming into play once you're on five bases it's kind of a necessity lings just pouring down here 
towards the bottom left, but Motive's gonna move to intercept the reinforcements to this army. He just doesn't have any observers with this force, though. Oh, they, there's an observer popping out just in the nick of time, but a Dark Swarm comes into play. That's gonna shut down uh, the Dragoons from being effective at all over here on the uh, left-hand side, but at the same time, focusing down the Nexus. Nexus is gonna fall so fast here, he picks it off. That's a big kill. Getting rid of that Nexus is huge. It's still, it, it's not like we're close to mining out here uh, just yet for Motive on these two bases, but he does need to get that down here sooner rather than later. Yeah, I mean, more and more bases are going to be sprouting up. I mean, Motive is going to have to start playing whack-a-mole um, like Saxory is doing himself very soon. Have a probe transfer going up to this mineral only, I think. Uh, hopefully to this uh, 9 o'clock base eventually when that gets back online. But yeah, really slowed down in his production uh, is Motive by these onslaughting attacks down this left vector. And there is a, a, f a further aggression coming out. Another plague, not the best of plagues, but it doesn't really matter. Any value is value right now for Saxer, who's currently still even on supply and uh, almost even on upgrades. Uh, Motus 3-2 just kicked him. 3 armor, 2 attack, but uh, Saxu was on 2-2 for a time being. Now he'll have a 3-2-2 and or 3-1 three, uh, three on his melee unit soon. So this is going to be pretty insane from Saxu. I'm kind of like speechless by like how Motus is being more and more beautiful plagues. He's slowly sliding these lurkers into position under these dark swarms to get into this pocket on the 9 o'clock. But he does not try to win here with this move. He's just trying to trade get down as many plagues on this army as possible keep it weak keep the head of the dragon as small as possible so it's easier to cut off later yeah just sending one two uh three lurkers at a time over here uh, under these dark swarms it forces the storms you can't clear this with just uh plagued zealots uh, a few archons can take it out but he's dealing with the cannons right now in the front Wow, these Archons are holding their ground pretty well. The Reaver here inside the main base is going to be invaluable as well to pick off those Reavers or pick off those Lurkers and clear out the uh, Mass Crackling. But uh, Lings are getting here underneath the Dark Swarm. They're starting to hit this the uh, Nexus once again. And the Reaver actually goes down to pure Ling. Relentless here is Saxory. One DT over in the center right. Cleans up four drones, it looks like, and is going to get this hatchery, but does it really matter? Saxter is going to take another base here in the top left while shutting down this fifth base. Just waves of units coming out right now from him. I think Saxter even saved the base on three with some cracklings. This is insane play from Saxter. He's playing about 400 APM and just relentless onslaught over and over again. Just pure Sauron Zerg mode. Even managing to save that base at the three o'clock is kind of insane. Does take a lot of losses to these side storms and these tight bottleneck chokes. Has got an overlord to spot over the ridge line here. So thankfully for him, he will be able to see what's going on um, on the other side. So he can still get some hits with these lurkers and what have you. But uh, and he's, oh, GG, both just taps out. Wow, Motive gives up here. Saxory just so beastly with the macro. Overwhelming again and again. Motive's pitiful attempts to take the center left. He just couldn't hand, hang on against what Saxory is bringing forward here. Um, rare that we see just complete overwhelming from a Zerg player at that level. Um, even having Reavers and Templar and everything Storm uh, prepared at that base, but it wasn't enough. He just keeps on sending in units. Like, the splash damage is supposed to, on paper, be able to hold a tiny little choke like that, but he wasn't able to do it with the continuous Lurker and Ling running forward. Really, really well done here. Saxory showing us a different style of Sauron Zerg than what we've seen before and moving forward here who's his next opponent that was his that was his bad matchup guys that was Saxory what he's supposed to be you know a very low win percentage now he's going to be going into one of his highest win percentages versus Terran next okay sending out Royal here next I was correct Jin was just asking me who I thought we sent out here for the Terran squad if I was incorrect, I wouldn't have told you guys that. <laughs> I just wouldn't have said anything. But here we go. We've got Royal down here at the bottom left. Saxory looks pretty strong right now, man. He's looking very, very good, very confident. Can Royal throw a stick into his spokes here and trip him up in the early game? 
Yeah, well, Motive was a softball for him to smash out the park, and now he's got Royal to contend with. So it won't, we'll still be a, a bit of a, you know, a bit of a fastball or curveball tossed his way this time. So we'll see if he can handle this kind of different um, speed and pace that Royal will be able to set for him. But yeah, Zerg versus Taran is his favorite matchup. He's very solid ZVT, and that's one of the reasons why he's kind of risen from the ashes like a phoenix and gone through to the the higher echelons of StarCraft by playing against these guys so much on the ladder and getting beaten up by them for many years and finally starting to be able to do well for himself. And uh, yeah, look, Royal's not scouting at all right now. He's going He's going CC first. Look at yeah. this. Dude, guys, yeah. this, I, I mean, we've avoided talking about this uh, just yet. This is a hot topic. Flash is back on the ladder right now. And you know what he did in... Uh, some of his matches versus Jadon last uh, this in this last week was CC first. He's been pulling it out, and you know there's been punishments for the the uh, hatchery first. People have been punishing it with eight racks a lot recently. Um, but pulling out the CC first, it's another way of of punishing a Zerg player for going for that 12 hatch. Uh, it gives you such a big advantage. What is he going to do with it, though? Because what Flash has been doing on the ladder is going CC first into mech play, uh, which has been uh, very, very successful. But I'm not sure that Royal is that type of player. Is he a mech player? Uh, well, I mean, most of these players can play mech, but he's not necessarily... Um... You know, he's, he doesn't, he's not like fantasy. He doesn't like going for mech very often. He's more of like a bio, maybe consider like a Valkyrie build or something, or, you know, maybe like a, a triple factory to counter Crazy Zerg or something. But yeah, not usually going for straight up mech. So if he does do that, I'd be really curious. Dude, how funny is it that we're seeing, um, like how, how long has it been since we've seen CC first versus Zerg? Um, quite, quite I, time. I feel like it's been forever. Like, let me know, guys, when the last time, if you if you remember, um, if there's one that's st sticking out in your mind recently that I just I'm not, it's not coming to mind to me right now. Let me know in the comments. But I honestly can't remember the last time we saw CC first. And Flash comes back. He he plays it against Jadong on the ladder, and here it is in KCM now. Rules uh, playing it out. Let's see. Uh, if he goes for that mech build and copies him even further, it's just, it's funny how much of an effect, truly, that Flash actually has on the way that people play and, and how the meta evolves. Yeah, we might be seeing a lot of meta shifts coming out just because Flash is around. People are going to be all eyes on him, not just the Terrans, but also the respective Zergs and Pros watching the versus Terran matchups and seeing how he approaches the game and how they will have to adjust or given the insights, courtesy of Flash himself, um, utilizing them in their own play to both adjust and improve their gameplay. It's a valuable resource to learn from the best. And Flash has been and maybe still is the best of all time, especially in the the Starcraft sphere, so that might change soon. He's back, but we'll have to see how he performs over the next year. But it, it could be that Flash comes back and, you know, puts his, thrown, puts his thro um, crown back on his head, sits down on his throne, and, you know, looks like he's uh, back in business and back to rule. Well, even if he's not at the absolute top, you know, if he doesn't win ASL, it doesn't mean that he won't have a big effect on the meta because he is one of the players that, uh, everyone recognizes as having one of the deepest knowledges and understandings of the game uh, overall. So uh, whether he, uh, you know, dominates or not, he is still going to be kind of bringing up ideas and, you know, bringing out new uh, builds that are going to be used and change the meta here. And look at this. Royal went for the CC first. He went immediately into plus one and now into four racks. This is going to be an insane fast. Okay. Insane quick four racks here. So, yeah. so fast. Because um, with the CC first, you can just get these out way, way quicker uh, than if you were regularly just going to go one racks uh, fast expand into plus one. Um, he's going to have to build way less turrets here. It, it's just going to give him such a big advantage. 
Uh, CC first yeah. is an insanely strong build if you can get away with it. It's not so much that the game is over, it's just that all the timings and everything just works better for Royal now. Like, he's just got slightly more than he would usually have. All the timings are slightly earlier, and what he will need will be less. Like, he'll need, like you say, less turrets, and everything will just work out better for him. And because, as Terran, you, you, you spend money where you need to, and, you, you, and so, for example, you would cut to make turrets, and... Like, unfortunately, like, Royal doesn't have to worry about that now. Like, he, he's got so many resources available to him that he's not having to cut any corners, really. And he's going to have everything very crisp, and he's not having to cut production. Like, everything's going to be, like, flawless, whereas Saxry going for the respective 2.5 hatch into this muter play with the early on location third, it, it's a reasonable counter to what Royal's doing, but he's not going to be in an advantage for a long, long time. Yeah, he's coming in here to get rid of that turret. There's actually quite a few more turrets than I was expecting. I thought he would push across the map here uh, as the uh, first few mutas were arriving and then skimp on turrets a little bit back at home with the threat uh, in towards the natural being enough to, to keep Saxory out of his base. But he's actually added on quite a few extra turrets. He's uh, you know, skimped a little bit here on um, building his SCVs. He was slowing down that just slightly, but he's going to be a lot more safe here um, and pushing forward with already this kind of crazy macro with four uh, racks pumping and a factory is finished up with the starports going. So Royal just looking very, very good right now. And Saxory just now getting his third base online. He's starting to mine his minerals. He will start that gas geyser soon. It, it's looking very good for Royal. Saxory's going to have to pull out something sneaky here to be able to take this game, I think. And it's likely yeah. going to be a switch into Hydralis Defiler. Uh, that's going to be how he brings this one back, is by uh, getting super efficient with that composition. Yeah, now I'm curious. Did Royal just make his uh, science facility? If he's going straight into vessels, or is he going to Valkyries here? So far, though, um, Zachary did a pretty good job of cleaning up the bio just before the bulls uh, join forces and become a more unstoppable large mass moving across the map. So it's actually doing an okay job of keeping the bull uh, in a relatively small enough um, to deal with, to deal with. But I don't know. Like still with the with the 14 CC star and Royal pumping like this, he may be able to just come in here and like bowl Saxory over soon if he doesn't start to make lurkers soon at these um, ramp locations at the three o'clock and what have you. He's only got like one sunken at each location. He needs to start making um, some kind of a additional defenses there with like the likes of lurkers in the next like 30 seconds or so. He might just die. Oh, drones going across the map. This is a miss rally here. He's going to lose all three. Ouch, that really hurts right there. Um, I think this has just been spotted here in the center right. Rolls just found out about the base over here. I think the reason that Saxory went for this third over in the center right is because he realized that there was going to be way too many marines out that he wouldn't be able to defend long enough uh, with just pure mutilus to get that uh, base online with uh, lurkers in time. Like, it's just not going to happen. He was going to be under too much pressure. There's going to be way too many marines. Uh, and so... He gets the base in the center right there. It's a lot easier to defend on that high ground. Uh, and he's going to utilize that base to, to get himself into this next stage of the game where he can start to trade a little bit more efficiently. He's done a great job so far, though, really. Uh, it's just... It's tough. It's tough. There's so many Marines. Even if you're trading uh, in a pretty decent way, it's still going to be really, really hard to stop this attack. He will get the Lurkers here, but is it going to be in time? I think he's just bought... Barely enough time here with these mutilists. Yeah, well, the mid game is like Terran's uh, time to shine against Zerg, laying siege to them until they can stabilize, get a fourth gas, and make something over here. Come, just running into the sunkers. The lurkers only just now hatching. You might be able to pop one of those lurkers for Ian Burrows. Only two lurkers are now getting targeted down. One remaining will get taken down. And here comes the big push from Royal. Also going to push through both of these sunkers. There are some mutilists coming into the Here come the additional Marines. If Saxby can't clean up these Marines before the additional Marines come in, maybe he'll be able to kill these additional lurkers from the south as well. Oh. And he is going to do just that and now start target down these mutas one at a time this is crazy crazy from royal this is exactly what i was worried about happening and it does come to pass and gg saxu just taps out literally three seconds from being safe and he's dead that is insanity man this is the power of the cc first like we were saying it punishes that uh 12 hatchery very very well it's no eight racks you don't 
win the game immediately, but you have a big advantage, and it's very hard for a Zerg player to make up for that. Even switching quickly into Lurker and Hydra Defiler is not going to be enough here for Saxory. He wasn't quick enough. That massive plus one Marine Army bust is bust through the natural and Royal will advance. Who do we send out here against Royal YSC or Stork? I don't know if Stork is up to the task. I think it might be YSC. We're about to find out. Here we go. Game number three, YSC gets sent out versus Royal. We're on Apocalypse. Um, I mean, this map is pretty balanced, I would say. Like, what do you feel about this map in, in TVP? Uh, yeah, honestly, like, I've got no complaints about it personally. I'll have, I know there's some people that don't like playing on it, um, on the ladder mm. and what have you. But um, overall, I really like watching games on this map. And I enjoy playing on it personally, so I don't have any problems with it. Uh, I know some people have a, you know, a bit of a bias against certain maps, and this is one of them. A lot of people don't like it for whatever reason, but overall, I think it's a good map. I think it's a reasonable three-player map. Um, some people, I think, don't like all three-player maps. So, um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it plays out like a little Silfid differently. Really hate, yeah, like, Silphid was really hated, but the reality is Silphid's actually one of the most balanced maps we've got. <laughs> and it's a three-player map, so it's kind of insane. Don't get me wrong, there's loads of things wrong with it. It's just that, statistically speaking, it's pretty balanced. I think it's... Uh, kind of fallen out of balance recently if i'm being honest the way that terran players have figured out how to abuse uh tank pushes on that map against zerg it, it's so hard to hold on to a third gas on that map it's crazy but i digress guys we're here on ascension with royal going into this gas geyser no probe coming out for a scout from ysc just yet looks like he's just gonna open uh like single goon into expansion what do you think this is going to be here Jun? yeah i mean the timings look like it, he's just going to go straight into dragoon here i mean you're not you're not you're not probe scouting as well like usually if you don't probe scout you you, you can assume they're not going to make the zealot and mm -hmm. that's why as terran players if they see the early probe scout they're kind of like oh the zealot's gonna be coming mm -hmm. you know that's kind of like the, the tell in a way so the fact that he's not probe scouting does indicate that he's going to go straight into dragoon maybe 23 nexus well royal gonna set up a very nice little sim city here it's not gonna matter though oh wait a second so it Ooh, does come out yeah hmm. you can do, you can do this as pro in, in fact this is better to do against good players because because you don't um probe scout there's a chance that you get lucky with the coin flip and then you get a zealot in their base early and just have a small advantage just for, for free hmm. well he sees that zealot so he will be prepared against it and he's got the sim city back at home and he will be able to utilize it Vulture should be coming out immediately. He won't skip the um, machine shop here and hides the probe. This is a technique that uh, Zerg players usually use against um, Protoss players to make sure that they can get their natural down. But here, YSC hides the probe and he sends it out uh, after the SCV has passed. I guess he was making sure that um that wasn't scouted so he wouldn't throw down an engineering bay is that what that was for uh maybe um I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not too sure about royal's decision here like there's a uh, hmm. i think yeah he's getting enough damage on the for a second there, I thought like the vulture was a little bit mistimed with the dragoon, and like there was a chance there for like royal to like maybe lose the SCV on the uh, command center, but I was completely wrong about that. And he doesn't commit to trying to pick that off, and royal with the four marines, one vulture, gonna be able to push everything back here. Uh, it's a pretty strong uh, anti-zealot force. The dragoon does kind of mess with this oh wait did he cancel he canceled he canceled the bunker hold on a second would he be in trouble right now well there's no other dragoon heading across the map he actually shaves off the shields here of the dragoon with the vulture and then sends it back towards his natural he doesn't have the bunker though um this wow. is th this is what it, we really struggle against is the actual dragoon force coming forward with just vultures and marines we're gonna be able to kite this very hard and the the build that he's gone for 
He's going to have range here really, really soon with quite a few Dragoons ready to fight. Yeah. Um, the lack of Bunker is a pretty big risk here right now for Royal, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a well-calculated risk. He's he's kind of assuming correctly in how YSC will approach this game. But yeah, you're absolutely right. It was a little bit of a risk there, a little bit of a gamble. He doesn't know what's going on behind that. It could have been a second gateway follow-up as well, you know, additional mm -hmm. production. It could be five Dragoons descending upon him right this second. So yeah, a little bit risky for Ro here, but still um, has, you know, basically called the bluff of uh, YSC here and played as greedy as he could possibly muster in that situation. It's kind of given himself a little bit of a nice advantage here in the mid game. Early one vulture gonna slip by here can he put down some mines behind the dragoons right now looks like he will not uh he actually doesn't have any mines on this vulture so he won't be able to throw it down any more mines just for now these two vultures gonna run in throw down mines on the high ground but gets picked off immediately ysc uh keeping these vultures back right now making sure that uh, he's not gonna take any unnecessary damage from these mines and that he's got a good position on his own plateau uh, to defend from you don't want to give away that high ground to the terran player too easily otherwise he might set up some tanks over there and make it really hard for you to bust out but for now roll just going to be sitting back here generally on this map we see terran players uh, work into a third base pretty consistently uh, nice and early and then uh, you know, power off of those three bases uh, into a very big push. It's almost uh, without fail that that's the, the type of game that Terran players want to go for. Is that what Royal wants to do now? Is he going to throw a curveball here at YSC? Well, he could also go for like a five factory kind of option if he wants to put on more aggression and, you know, do a more two base timing kind of way of playing into a third base. But so far, the observer comes in and sees everything. So if he was going for that setup, he'd have maybe like a turret ring or he wouldn't just want to show that that's what he's going for. So he is doing a more upgrade Terran style thus far, getting his academy around uh, finished up about seven minutes. He has to cut four SCVs for that, so he may choose to make one concert at a time to kind of not take as big of an economic deficit. We'll have to see how he likes to approach that. But yeah, so far, like, everything seems pretty much on curve. Like, nothing really suspicious out of both players. And we'll probably see Royal also go up to uh, four Goliaths eventually, so he can start, you know, killing all these observers and warding away any potential shells and Reaver slow down on his push timing. I don't see any Reavers out just yet, and I don't see a lot of gateways either. YSC takes a pretty quick third uh, Nexus here, but what will be his follow-up? Is he going to put on a bunch of gateways here, or is he going to change up his tack? Um, if Royal is being like really slow and taking his third base, he might like want to switch that up a little bit. Go into um, another tack. Okay, there's the Reaver. Never mind. We are going to have the Reaver tack. Uh, the choice of adding on the goons or adding on the uh goliaths is going to pay off here for royal as he tries to push forward he adds on more factories is he going to try and take this third base with just three factories or will he need more here to make this happen uh with the current curve of the game i think three will be adequate actually uh, it, it is a chance that it wouldn't be adequate but he scans he 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 sees like roughly what's going on so he has a pretty good idea that this is a safe play to move out right now he sees roughly the gateway count the choice to go into reavers the timing of that as well he saw the warp in timing i think of that um support bay which he, which clues him in even more into where he's at in this game so he's gonna like throw down some sim city bunker and depot there as well i believe so can have a pretty good defensive setup meanwhile for inversely why is he gonna be taking his fourth base uh, i would say this is pretty early actually taking your fourth base at like eight minutes 40 it's uh a little bit greedy but i think it's respectably greedy considering that he can't do anything about this third base timing of royal yeah, if this was a uh, different game here with a much earlier Reaver, I would say that taking the third base on three factories is pretty risky, considering the current meta is geared towards players breaking open Terran on three bases when they're moving out a little bit too quickly. We're already we're just at nine minutes right now, and Royals almost got that third CC done. The uh, shuttle is just now flying in, but both players kind of warp speed accelerating themselves into the next stages of the game. Not attacking into each other, 
respecting the the option of take uh, of attacking each other like royal is adding on a lot of uh, extra buildings in his base or over towards that entrance to his third base you know setting up everything properly but taking very greedy expansion as is ysc uh, and both of them powering up really really fast here into the mid game yeah, really impressive stuff. Um, Royal also, because he saw the warping timing of that support, they had his zoning turrets like finish as the shuttle was in position to fly in. So everything is like really crisp and clean in this game. A very uh, a good game to study, to learn some Terran versus Protoss 101. We do see an additional shuttle being added to the assault now to maybe to get past at least one of these turrets. And uh, if the, the speed kicks in anytime soon, he'll be able to go in in a moment here. Maybe do some significant damage, but the Royal sniffs this out. He's got his... Uh, Vultures, tanks, and Goliaths all moving into position into the main base, waiting for this to occur. And uh, I don't think that'll be too significant in the damage it's able to yield as a result. Yeah, we've got some mines here ready to intercept. That's a lot of uh, uh, supply depots as well. Okay, drops down here. Can the Scarab go over? It hits the tank, and there it goes. The Reaver gets taken out. This was a great shutdown from Royal. You can see there's just a tiny bit of space where uh, YSC can fly by the turret without taking any damage, but that was that was a bait, really. Royal ends up shutting that down perfectly, and now he has a great position here with no harassment damage and, you know, just powering, powering on this uh, three-base economy here and going into his upgrades as quickly as possible. Yeah, I mean, Motive is uh, likewise going to have to start to think a bit more expansive himself. He's going to come down into the bottom left and set up two next side down there, and eventually maybe even you know, additional gateways to set up another another rally point because he knows that there's going to be a, a pretty strong timing out. It's not like Royal is like in a huge advantage or anything. It's just that he's set up to do exactly what he wants to do, and that's not really a comfortable position to be in as Protoss in this matchup. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of mines here in the main base for Royal. He's making sure that nothing's going to go wrong here uh, when he eventually starts this push, that nothing like a no small budget recall can get in here and uh, deal any significant damage in his main base. Um, but he is no doubt setting up for a huge attack very, very soon. 150 supply now. How is he doing on these upgrades? I think he must be nearing that 2-1. A marker and that should be the moment when he wants to start to push and at least take his peninsula and look towards a fourth base if not just going across the map and trying to take out some yeah. of these YSC bases because they are starting to spread out everywhere now he, he, he'll start to push out in about 30-ish seconds uh, unless he wants to slow the timing to more of a max out but he, he has his 2-1 finishing up in about 30 seconds from now so he'll, he'll very soon be starting to want to move out he needs to take this high ground um uh, pl uh plateau in, 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 initially because once he secured that he's both got a great offensive pos a defensive position to control both lo uh, both of his expansions at once and also then has a, a, gr a great stage to start launching vectors of attack vulture raids out onto the map and really start to get his claws into this game already some movements out on the map but so far has been shut down by uh, the forces of um, YSC here but that will not be the case in a moment here as he starts to move out YSC is going to have to be very fluid in his army movements to keep up with this huge Terran force I like what I like what Royal is doing right now sending just two vultures out around the map instead of grabbing like an entire control group uh, it's not going to lower the potential power of his army okay now he's sending out a lot he sees that there's maybe some space to move around with this but uh, what I was trying to say is that, you know, having a, just a few vultures run around means that it's like a low commitment. You can get some damage. You can get some good positioning. But if you lose all the vultures, it's not as big of a deal as if you lost like this big group of vultures. If you lose all of these vultures here on the screen right now, 24 vultures go down before you try to move out. Why is he could just bash down your first push forward and you might end up losing all your tanks? Yeah, you need the vultures, the sponge, the zealots, and also to like, you know, lay down mines to have any kind of additional uh, yield in the splash damage to mow down the usually superior Protoss force. 
Um, without the vultures, usually you just get speed lots running to your tanks all day and eventually you die. Here comes a big assault here from YSC though, has the, the speed, speed shells bombing onto the backline tanks and meanwhile the storms coming out the front and beautiful, beautiful storms uh, with the tank siege up like in a bit of a panic here from Royal, it's kind of spelled a little bit of a disaster for him and now with the high ground advantage, YSC getting some pretty great trades and doing a great job of reducing this uh, tank count critically. Ooh, dude, these tanks. Look at all the tanks on the right-hand side here. They were not part of that last fight. They were not able to deal their damage there. Uh, I think that the wall in here, working against Royal in this case, he was trying to move everything forward, but a lot of it got caught behind the wall and didn't really fight there. But coming out now with a lot of vultures, can he clear all the dragoons? He gets more than half of them, uh, but does trade away a few of the tanks. I don't think he can push across the map right now, but he will move to take his third base here, uh, setting that up now. CC is already done, so that's going to float and land in just a moment. Uh, and he will be preventing YSC from getting over here. Tanks on the high ground, tanks on the low ground as well. Can YSC actually break through right now? I don't think so, but maybe he can pick off a few tanks and kind of delay this, uh, this push a little bit further. Yeah, I don't think this will be too successful uh, going for this. He wants to try and see if he can get a win condition right here, right now. Maybe he can catch the uh, SCV transfer train with some storms, but beautiful D-matrixes and positioning of these tanks will shut down these plays. He is still going for the the, the, high, the, the high Templar play in the, the base, though, and the, all the SCVs not quite getting stormed. That's a good storm, but beautiful turnaround from Royal going to be mitigating significant losses there. So everything considered, Royal in a great position, and now we're looking in a split map situation because I don't think YSC is going to do anything about this for quite some time but inversely I also think that Royal can't do anything about these two bases churning away in the bottom left so we're going to see a six base Protoss versus a four base Terran split map position and this is going to be an interesting late game scenario. No additional tank here from YSC that I can see at the moment. Uh, he hasn't switched into Arbiters or Carriers just yet. He's still sticking with this double robotics speed shuttle play. Uh, it's going to get less and less effective as time goes on, and especially as 3-3 finishes up here for Royal. Royal starting to move towards the middle of the map. Now that top uh, center is secure, his fourth base is online. He could start to try and take this buildable center terrain. Uh, coming in to break that before it truly gets set up in earnest. Doing a great job here, breaking this position before all the turrets are done. He drops a lot of uh, Zealots and Templar. And gets some great storms here on a few of these clump tanks. Royal struggling to do everything at the same time, including split his tanks uh, into groups that are smaller uh, than, you know, two or three tanks in a, a tight little group where uh, storms can hit all of them at the same time. It's really important to do. But it takes so much attention and consistent control that maybe Royal's not uh, quite up to the task here just yet. He's uh, having a lot of these tanks quite stacked up over and over again and taking a lot of damage. He finally kills his own bunker to open up the position. It might have been a better choice to kill that uh, with the initial push so he could have gotten his tanks into position a little bit better for that first push out. But he finally does that now and he is pushing forward in earnest here trying to take the center of the map. Well, he needs to move those marines to make use of that um, killing of the bunker because at the moment the marines are still going to be blocking that so he will have a little bit of unit flow issues until he identifies that he also needs to move the marine scan going off in the main base to see that there's no arbiter tech or anything just yet so might be having some poor man recalls instead but so far it looks like a frontal assault best style just going to hit the hammer hit the uh, hammer onto the nail as hard as we can see what happens steve major is coming out on the front tank beautiful size comes on the high ground but the tanks aren't that clumped up so they're not doing the kind of damage he'd like to but there's six significant amount of Protoss infantry forces of Dragoons that could come up here, but with the big clump of his, um, tanks on the high ground, not quite able to come into his position. So as long as he can just sort of stay on this periphery, keep the, the Royal kind of semi-contained here, and just keep trading out tanks uh, as much as possible and prevent him from getting out, getting up to a really strong 200 maxed out army with 3 free upgrades, maybe YSC can do an, um, a good enough job of uh, keeping Royal at bay here. So far, so good, I would say. And now that he's got like all these gateways powering and he's um, he hasn't quite taken any additional gas he doesn't need to. He's like churning out so many cells and infantry forces that he's got actually a huge gas bank right now. So maybe more High Templars or Arbiters could be added to this mix. Yeah, this is getting 
to be a little bit bad here for Royal. He's managed to reach 172 supply, but every time he moves forward, YSC is diving on top of his army. He's dropping a lot of zealots here and a great storm hitting about four tanks there on the high ground. The dragoons are running up here. We're actually out of zealots, but the numbers of tanks are low enough at this point that maybe we can continue to push through. Nice D-Matrix there, and YSC will have to retreat, but maintaining a higher supply here despite all of these trades he's lowered that tank count once again and royal is starting to run out of cash he's gonna move down here towards the bottom uh center to try and take over this base if YSE can deny that this game is gonna get really really hard for royal if he grabs that base though uh we could see this go into a very long game well, this is the tipping point that was he was kind of hoping for. Eventually, Royal would be mined out in its main and natural and be reduced to just two base of economy to potentially four of YSC. So a little bit of an issue here for Royal going forward. He needs this base set up in this bottom right pocket and everything is coming down to this right now. Huge flood of Zealots coming forth with Storm and some of the tanks are clumped as well. Beautiful Storm on those clumper tanks in the north. They're just like one hit from dying now. And so so now YSC kind of flipping the script on Royal even further in this game and keeping him tucked away on this two base economy while he's churning out huge amounts of zealot, zealots and dragoons and high templars to just keep smashing him like uh, honestly i'm not too sure that royal can can keep going for too much longer if he doesn't get this base up in the bottom right yeah, he's having a hard time macroing right now uh, any significant force to actually hold on to this bottom base he's got to uh, hold on to a lot of different areas right now. He has to hold this top center. He's got to hold that plateau in the middle of the map. There's a lot of points of weakness here, and YSC is going to probe them to see if he can break any of these positions. First up is top center. There's not a lot of tanks over here. There's just a few Marines. Those are going to get exploded pretty quickly, and the position has been open. Meanwhile, he's sending another small force down here to the bottom center. This is great moves by YSC to just pull apart a Terran player who's already suffering here, who's already been pulled nearly to his limit. He's getting in on multiple bases and forcing a decision here out of Royal to save this base or to save bottom center. He's chosen top center here, uh, and he's going to lose all the SCVs down here at the bottom center as a result. This is beautiful head body boxer mentality here from YSC, like throwing jabs to the head, make every, all well, the hands come up to protect the head and suddenly you go for the body again and the armors just can't keep up with the attacks and launching assaults from both vectors here to keep Royal guessing and forcing him to split his forces inconsistently and at a deficit here. And without having a critical mass of units to fight off these attacks, he's just getting a completely overwhelmed 50 supply deficit despite these 3-3 upgrades here. And now another force coming up to bully the head, force the arms to come up to protect the head again but so far all the arms have gone down to protect his body he's taken so many liver shots trying to get this base set up in the bottom right that he's now like just getting crippled in the north yeah i don't know if there's many scvs left at this point shun how many scvs do we actually have here 40 30 um we've got like one base mining over at that third he does get the fifth base up and operational but he's on an 80 supply disadvantage can he hold on to his own plateau even and this base down in the bottom right he certainly can't hold uh, the base in the top center any longer he's not gonna be able to reclaim that why is he is growing even further and he is nowhere near mining out right now yeah, this is like a nightmare situation for Terran because he, he's only just now got this base set up, but now he's back to two again because he took, had this uh, had the head just like punched into oblivion. And now another storm drop, only one turret here with tanks. If there's a zealot in here to tank fire, he will get at least uh, one or two storms off. But even with even with just high templars, he's still going to get a few SEV kills. And any SEV kills is crippling damage at this point in the game. Just 116 supply as another huge force of goon and a few um, zealot support come into this high ground peninsula. See if they can get some damage done further onto these siege tanks there is pretty good positioning of the tanks but unfortunately from the high ground advantage just getting stormed to death some d matrix coming down to counteract these storms but it doesn't matter as long as you're trading with any kind of efficiency here for ysc he's going to be coming out on top so even though he loses all these dragoons and they go splat he's still doubling the supply of royal here the gg scans come out he checks all the bases of ysc and taps out 
brilliantly done here by YSC. Really tactical brilliance being shown. The way that he was diving upon the Terran army as he was coming up that uh, for the first attack there up onto the plateau and then splitting the army back and forth, back and forth, head and stomach over and over again, hitting him and hitting him and hitting him again and again. That is exactly how you want to play that sort of gateway man style. You don't want to be hitting uh, directly uh, into the punch of your opponent. The, uh, the main army is too strong. You want to be splitting them apart and taking small fights that are better suited to your army type. And he did very, very well at that. He manages to take out Royal. I wasn't expecting it, Shun, were you? No, I was expecting it at all. Well, surprising us both here. YSC is going to continue on. Hero or Queen will be his next opponent. All right, Royal is out. YSC moves forward. He's going to be going up against Queen here. Troy is the map. Let's see what uh, YSC can bring out here against Queen. Um, definitely a Protoss favored map, I'd say, Troy, as... We, yeah. it, we, were, we weren't really too sure about who it was going to favor when it first came out, but it seems to have rounded out that way. Yeah, I think it gives a few more options to Protoss players, especially in the early game shenanigans they can do to Zerg. So definitely maybe a little bit of a cutting edge to them. But yeah, I mean, Queen's no slouch, though, and he, he at one point was dominating Zerg versus Protoss. And so YC is going to be playing, need, need to be playing his absolute A game to take down Queen here. I do think this is going to be a Queen victory, but I'd, I'd be I'd be willing to be pleasantly surprised here. So far, YC kind, kind of on a little bit of a momentum streak and maybe can, like, you know, start to take down some bigger names with Acer. There's not too many bigger names than Royal right now. It's uh, a big motivation and uh, confidence boost to take him out before going up against Queen here. Is this double gate right now? He is going to double gate this, isn't he? Um, what do we have on the side of Queen? I think he took a gas. Is this nine pool speed? Uh, I, I, over pool? I think so. Hmm. And I think that... Hmm. Yeah, that's over pool. Yeah. Overpool yeah, that's, gas. That's really interesting. Okay. So he's kind of like hedging his bets a little bit here. Like kind of being defensive against this kind of early shenanigans from um, YSC. While also not putting himself so far behind and so committed to the play that he would be in a bit of trouble here. So yeah, really curious stuff. Interesting decision by Queen. He's going to have the six links popping here in a moment. Um, looks like he built one extra drone, so he doesn't have all six ready to go. He's only going to be able to start four. But he pulls all the drones off of gas as he starts the plus one. Or not plus one, excuse me. As he starts that speed there. Um, yeah. It's going to make him a lot stronger against these initial zealots, and it might force YSC to just stay home. But it's not going to give him a very fast expansion here. No, yeah, I mean, both players will be an interesting scenario here because with the link speed on the way, these Zealots can't do the same kind of significant damage they would like to. For a while, they'll put on a little bit of pressure. Might be able to save this probe, but he's really gunning for this probe with those first four links. Does now instead try and transfer onto the, the Zealots around, but unable to do that additional second Zealot now in play against the six links, but an additional two will be. So it looks like um, YSC gonna have to wisely be plugging the wall with his uh, units right now. And Queen now has the option uh, of throwing down a macro hatchery, which is very, very curious that he's not expanding right now. I, I'm, I'm not too sure about the... I'm, he must be wanting to do a Ling all in here and obfuscate the fact that he's doing this. Um, that's the only explanation I can have for this, unless he wants to make the third hatchery in his natural and go for a two base timing, but it does look like a Ling flood play and he just wants to make the hatchery as close to his main as possible to have a faster build timing on that. Although he is now sending additional drone out to make the, the potential hatchery in his natural, so I'm a little bit confused about the, the choice here. Yeah, this is, this is a wild start to this game. Um, why is he not cutting any corners right now? He's... Uh, gone ahead and thrown down the forge and he is going to start the cannon before he gets a nexus as well so he's being very careful and he's making the right choice in doing so because queen uh, he needs to do something with this 
He's built so many links and he didn't start his natural until just now. So it's super, super late. He's going to run by here. Let's see what he can do. Oh, there's actually a spot on the side. I didn't even know that that, that was open, but neither did YSE, I suppose. He's just going to get completely wrecked. Oh my god, that's crazy. That is absolute craziness. These lings are going to run into the main. You have to say miss you at 12 o'clock for Terran walling. Like, it looks like it's wall, but it's not. Uh, Desert tile set can be a little bit deceptive like that. This is what, exactly what Queen was hoping for. That's why he made the macro hatchery and the mains. He didn't want the natural hatchery to be sniped easily. He wanted to just be able to make Sunkens and Turtle in his main base against this run by uh, committal from YSC while doing a damage of his own in the main base with Lings. And he's taking a lot of drone losses though. These Sunkens are not quite ready, but he's in his, inversely doing a lot of damage in the main base of YSC. If you can get this round on both of those Zealots, there's going to be lights out for YSC, but so far doing a good job of microing those out to keep the probes alive and fighting about the AI being able to guide those links to target the probes down. Pretty good drone drill saving the Sunken Conley. Just one hit from these Zealots would finish it off. Finally going to be punching that down, but um, not before losing a lot of um, uh, Zealots and drones and links on both sides here. So it, coming down to very low economy situation, it looks like YSC is getting the better of it though. The links in the main base now dealt with with quite a few probes and just like three drones on the map. So Queen, I mean, why has he's done it? Yeah. Why has he's dispatched Queen saying like this is insane what we're seeing today? Why? Like, I, I thought they were just going to be throwing processes at the wall and see what sticks, but it seems like why has he wants to like build a wall to smash his opponents against right now? Well, that was a very strange string of decisions there made by Queen. I understand throwing down double sunken to try and hold the the zealot counter attack, but man, if there if there wasn't that hole on the left hand side of the gateway, how badly would that have gotten shut down? YSC had no idea about that. It didn't really feel like Queen knew about it either, but he definitely took good advantage of that situation. And despite having that occur and getting the the cannon kill right off the bat still not able to take a favorable trade and ends up getting knocked out immediately that's that's wild man that's just goes to show how much stronger YSC's build was than what Queen put together I'm very confused about his decision making his thought process for that game but it gets pretty much served by YSC I mean, he didn't cut any corners he didn't get greedy at all he just keeps building zealots and cannons or and that's going to be enough dude you're totally right ysc is crushing it right now i never would have expected it but now he's going to be going up against either light or sharp i imagine it's probably going to be light send out here or maybe sharp what do you think sharp yeah i think sharp actually yeah sharp is definitely uh a TVP specialist more than a TVZ specialist. So sending him out against YSC, I think that makes sense. Sharp indeed gets sent out here versus YSC. Cross map position on Radeon. It's already looking good for Mr. Hudo. YSC here in the bottom left. It's just been crushing it. Yeah. Yeah, I was just saying, like, momentarily um, before we started the game that I would send out Sharp because it makes more sense to keep Light in the back pocket as the more universal player and Sharp as the Terran versus Pro Specialist is the optimal time to come and just you know snuff the wind out of the snails from what i see right now and stop him while you can because if he, if he takes out sh like another player right now he could just go on a streak and just take everyone out you might just feel like a new vigor a new confidence in him and everyone else will probably be a little bit intimidated by his streak stork just sitting in the background uh fossilizing fossilizing <laughs> <laughs> just uh steepling his fingers right now everything's going to plan here so far for him and he's sitting in that background watching YSE dominate he's going to be feeling a, a very nice about his anchor position right now whereas uh hero I mean he's got to be a little bit flabbergasted at this point both queen and sax are going down it's a bit of an unexpected turn of events now sharp here He's going to be opening gas uh, in this build, and there's no Nexus first out of YSC. He's playing very nice and standard. He is going to scout, however, with this probe, which is a bit of a 
a different play style this time around? And will he build a Zealot once again? Or is he actually going to skip that and go directly to Dragoon this game? Well, seeing it's cross map, I, I, I doubt it, but he might still surprise me and make it anyway. He might make it because it's unexpected to make it. Like they both players know that they're cross map most likely right now. I mean it's possible that the it's possible that he did some weird movement patterns with this the scout to obfuscate, but with the, with those timings being so precise on the rush distances so long on this map, I really doubt we'll see the zealot being made here. Instead it'll be a slightly quicker Nexus, maybe around 21, 23. That's definitely what it's looking at like right now. This probe is on a one-way mission into the Terran main base. He will be caught and killed momentarily, but he got the information on the timing of the factory here, and he will go to his grave a little bit early there. Does send the secrets back home to YSC, though. And the Nexus yeah. goes down here in the natural dragoon out as well. Not probably not going to be able to send that straight across the map because that uh, vulture is going to be coming out here really soon and you do want to make sure that uh, no shenanigans can happen no uh, rogue vulture can slip by or anything Ooh, we don't have range here so uh, just a dragoon into a robotics facility he's going to chase the scv around and Sharp going to try and open up a position that he can slide that uh, that vulture in, but why is he not going to fall for it? He's not going to keep chasing that uh, SCV too far. He's going to make sure that he's ready for this vulture coming in. You know, with these huge distances cross map on Radiant, it's pretty much the longest rush distance we've got in the game right now with all the maps considered. So that way it makes more sense not to take range. You're probably not going to get much damage done with your initial aggression from those ranged Dragoons. And also, inversely, will not necessarily need an earlier range timing to deal with any kind of uh, early pushes from Sharp. Although Sharp is usually the player that likes to go for 11 gas fast Vulture, punish, and punish a Nexus first by his Vulture getting there just as the Dragoons pop out from the game ways he's not going to get those kind of benefits on a map like this instead just going to be going for a vulture drop play and trying to take advantage in that way that's another way he likes to play very vulture heavy style so instead of the early uh, pressure play from the vulture is going to be just going straight into vulture drop here which makes sense trying to make use of his tool set as best as to his ability well what do you think about this he uh ysc goes robo before range and then just gets an observatory uh, I would have this expected. Is how Quark would play. This is how Quark would play. Like the, the idea here is that the information game is more important at this stage. So you just want to get an observer into their base before they can possibly have a turret ring set up, because then you win the information game, and then you can optimize your build relative to what the Terran player is doing, and that's more important. It's gonna have two gateway dragon pumping out here. So he will have a good clutch of dragons to deal with whatever Sharp decides to pull out. But will he have the dragons in the position that they are needed uh, coming in against this drop? He needs dragons in the natural mineral line as well as in the main base. Potentially in the wall as well because Sharp likes to combo those attacks where he drops into the main and then he hits the front just flying in with the vultures. Uh, as the dragons are pulled back on a single hotkey to try and deal with that. Let's see how many vultures he has prepared for this. I think he's sending two straight across, getting ready for the stab into the natural while this uh, dropship flies through into the main base and tries to get as much damage as possible. Dragoons are up here at the top. We've got some in the mineral line as well. YSC is very well prepared for this. Let's see how it goes. And if YSC was smart, he would have seen there's mines out on the map and those new vultures have still have three. So we know there's vultures um, somewhere not where they should be. So he might have anticipated this, but oh, this two mine. Dragoons in natural expansion. The mine gets targeted down, so it doesn't get the splash down. His second mine goes down as well. Third mine also finding us, but now the vultures are at the gates as well. Gets the detonation on the probe and the Dragoons. This is brilliant damage. And now with the splitting of the vultures, we'll start mopping up all of these probes, the natural expansion. YSC is starting to bite the dust already to the pressure of a Sharp here. It's just cutting through him like a Ginsu blade beautifully. Very well done here by Sharp. He will lose the dropship. A nice target there at the end by YSC, making sure that Sharp won't get out with those vultures at the very least. But this was an extreme amount of damage. He's not on uh, three bases here yet, and he won't have the money to get on three bases for some time. With that many probes being lost, he's 
in a very rough position here. Why is he going to start to move out on the map? But uh, Sharp is just looking for more opportunities to backstab here. He's going to send in one Vulture towards that third base. I'd love to see a count of how many probes actually went down during that fight because I think it was a lot. Uh, two died for sure to a mine. Oh my god, it walks right into a mine there. That is just adding insult to injury here. Sharp is in uh, an almost unbeatable position at this point, and YSC is just grasping at straws here. Luckily for him, there's no uh, siege mode, but there it is. Siege mode finishes yeah. right as this gets up here. Dude, Sharp is just absolutely on top of everything. Yeah, if the, if the siege was like five, ten seconds late, maybe he could snipe off one tank there at least, and maybe you know, find a little bit of compensation. But all these dragoons as well are going to be triggering some mines. You need to be really careful. There's one mine just waiting there. This vulture is just teasing these goons, begging them to step just a few millimeters forward. That's in targeting range and just a tiny little sliver there. So yeah, at, at a diagonal angle, it's actually really deceptive how the, the targeting works with the hex tiles. So sometimes it will target the unit you don't think it would. It looks like the one on tops closer but it's actually not so sometimes the, the, the mines even drag deeper into the dragoons and get uh, even more beautiful splashes off big turret ring here back at home for sharp he's making sure that he's got all the defenses necessary there's no easy option for YSC to try to come back into this YSC is staking uh, really his only option right now which is this third base over here at the center left. It's going to give him a little bit of life in this game, but he's already even on supply with Sharp, and Sharp is gearing up for a big attack here. Five factory follow-up is going to be the choice with yeah. extra Goliaths being added on to just snipe any shuttles and another dropship coming in. You don't usually expect more dropship harassment at this point in the game, but Sharp is all for it. Oh, mine connection as well. Getting one extra probe. So I can abate that last mine in with the vulture or with the uh, zealot there. Yeah. One more mine back here. Oh, God. If that goes off, dude. That'd be insane. <laughs> well, even if he doesn't ravage the entire probe line, even just the lost mining time and the poor optimization of how long it takes for the drones to reach maximum saturation and optimum and optimal mining again, it's a huge dent in the econ economic boon of the Protoss player. Currently sitting at even supply with Sharp right now, which is very favoring the Terran player in this situation. And yeah, the, the five factory follow up is a very universal play. You don't necessarily have to win with it and just do a timing push and kill the Protoss player, although you could do. Uh, it just you can just make a lot of units and expand it it's good because you have slower upgrades and tech so you're, you're just banking on the fact that okay i want to kind of like go a bit middle middle road here and have a lot of units so that it doesn't really matter whatever happens like i've got enough to trade both offensively and defensively and then i can go into a third base small little push coming out here ysc sees everything but his eyes are going to be gouged out now that observer going down Picking those off is absolutely essential to a, a good Terran push. You want to be able to surprise the Protoss with your moves forward rather than just everything being tracked. And Vultures are going to get around to the sides here looking for opportunities for damage. Is there any opening on this wall? Looks like it is tight. Doesn't really look like it from the top of that pylon, but uh, it is in fact tight. A lot of Dragoons and army coming back here to deal with these Vultures. It's going to give uh, Sharp an opportunity to move forward. And he gets the shuttle? No! 5 HP. That was so, so close. close. So far. Yeah, needs to be careful. But has given a lot of ground to Sharp. He's now just outside the rally point area. This is a bit of a deceptive choke. It's both sometimes larger than it looks and smaller than it looks, depending on the stage of the game. You need to be careful attacking into this, depending on what stage of game it is actually at right now. And Sharp knows that he's out of position. He needs to back away. He just get completely flanked and squashed like a bug if he remained there for any longer. So he needs to pull right back right now. And this shuttle is at dangerously close from being sniped. So he could slow down this advance by risking a few goliaths here but it really doesn't want to lose a single unit while he's retreating here but the shuttle is low hp does target that down does get the kill both reavers now out of play big pickup from sharp currently still even on supply and with this fortified position and getting his third online he's going to be feeling even more comfortable here oh i thought that that was going to um 
kind of screw sharp over there when he turned around and, and tried to target with the, the Goliath onto the shuttle. Oh my god, three dragons just going down. Uh, great target firing there by Sharp, but you know, he turned around that Goliath. He actually halted all of the rest of his units, though. They couldn't move forward, and I thought that we were going to see big scarabs land, but he just turns, targets one of the Reavers down. It dies immediately, and then the shuttle dies immediately after that. YSC has hit the, the, the wall here. He's at the end of his luck. Basically nothing going right anymore. And he is just moments away from getting completely bowled over here by Sharp. I mean, Sharp is just slicing through all the like hydraulic wires on the machine that is YSC. And like a surgeon has dismantled him and dismembered him in ways that's making it harder and harder for him to find a foothold in this mid game right now. Finally, a Templar archive is being built, but it's going to be some time before storms and arbiters become relevant. So, and by that time, we're seeing Sharp almost maxed out already 160 supply to just 150 of YSC. Like, this is you don't, you don't see this in Tembrose's Protoss. This kind of lead with the Terran able just to sit back on three bases churning away it's almost nightmarish situation to be in for Protoss so YSC definitely has to make some kind of play in the next few minutes either catching a Sharp off guard by like doing some kind of poor man recall storm drop play or he needs to wait for Sharp to try and move out and then outmaneuver him but both of those things will be very hard to achieve this is the scary Sharp that we remember guys this is the Sharp that was looking uh, possible to win this season of ASL um, but did falter in his uh, TVZ matchup. It kind of boggles the mind. You wonder what if it was a Protoss player that he was up against in that last match. This is getting kind of sad, guys. <laughs> Flying in with two shuttles into the rally point here. What are we trying to get done right now? YSC, he didn't see any other way in, but that certainly wasn't the best option. He loses both shuttles immediately. I... I didn't even try to shoutcast that because it's a little bit cringe at this point. Flying in like that, you're going to lose everything. And this push is absolutely going to crush you. Why is he, why hasn't he even left this game yet? I guess he's going to hope that maybe Sharp doesn't push out uh, for a little while longer. He can get some storm out and then maybe, you know, land a, an amazing storm that kills 10 tanks. Or what are we looking for here? Yeah, I mean, he's not he, hoping a prayer, I think, saying, because I don't think much else is going to cut it. I don't think Jesus could come down from the heavens and save him right now. This is looking really rough. And there's, unless Sharp makes any kind of critical blunders with his army movement or control, which I don't see happening, he's very good in this matchup and very fluid as well. And his unit control is one of his, um, you know, his fortes. So I, I don't see that occurring. And the scan on top of the army, wherever it is, at any time, he's not going to be caught unawares. All his army is going to be balled up and able to fight a frontal assault with these infantry units of YSC that look pitiful in comparison even a D matrix coming out to make these trades but there are some decent storms in here but just not the kind of force of infantry you need to squash the rest of the force of Terran so he's slowing down the Terran advance but at a cost of all of his army right now just gonna be tapping out GG finally called the finally the the little monster has been put back in his cage and it's gonna be sharp going up against here next the last hope for Zerg Hero spawning here in the bottom right hand corner. Sharp over in the top left. Why is he there, man? He really fell apart in that game after taking so much damage early. The draw play yeah. was excellent by Sharp. Uh, and after that, he's like running into mines. He's like bumbling dragoons around. Um, you know, taking more and more damage and... Uh, you know, losing shuttles with reavers inside of them, it's it's rough. Uh, but that yeah. is, that, that's part of the battle, right? You gotta have that mental strength, you gotta have that mental resilience to handle a bit of damage and, and still play your best. And that's an astute point, Stan. I mean, at the end of the day, this is as much a psychological game, in some respects, more than a skill game. Like, all these players are very good in the skill element of the game, some better than others, but sometimes what's the, the, the make or break factor is their mindset and, you know, their ability to keep calm under pressure and when things don't go their way to navigate and min-max and adjust their style to deal with the new situation. A lot of players can't handle that kind of mental taxation and they do fall and crack under that pressure and that's why these 
these other players like Hero Light are so scary because they're not the kind of players that crack easily under that pressure and they can sometimes turn those bad situations around into wins. That's right, Shun. It's all about mindset, and that's why you should buy my course. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I'll teach you how to have a great mindset. No, don't don't take any advice from me, guys. My mindset in uh, Brood War, especially in ladder games, is uh, pretty dismal. It is what it is. I'm trying to uh, slowly improve. I'm doing a little challenge right now, Shun. I don't know if you've seen. I'm doing 10 games a day until I hit A rank. Yeah, do A rank. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. How's it's, that been going? Uh, I don't know if it's the right way to go about it. I'm just trying to get myself to play more games is my mentality, my thinking behind that. But um, right. grinding out that many games every single day is a little bit rough on the mental. So I'm not sure how it's going to go. We're going to stick with it for a little while yeah. longer. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that, <laughs> that ends up turning out. <laughs> My only advice would be uh, make sure you're not just showing up to grind out the 10 games just for the sake of having 10 <laughs> games played and you actually do still focus on the game still. <laughs> <laughs> Easier said than done, my friend. Easier said yeah. than done. Well, let's uh, let's focus up on this game here because Hero has gone for an early pool build. He's got a couple of sets of wings out here at the front. A little bit of a later uh, hatchery for him. Maybe he was afraid that we were gonna have like a CC first out of Sharp or uh, an eight racks out of him. What do you think he was expecting mm. here? Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, you do usually see um, eight racks come down on two player maps, but to be fair, a lot of drones, a lot of Zerg players counter that with a nine scout drone. And if you see that um, eight racks and it's it's out on the map with a drone scout that early, you're just you're just dead as Terran. So a lot of Terrans sometimes are a little hesitant to go for eight racks on maps like this, where it's easier to find the eight racks with a nine scout. So sometimes you'll see them be a little bit more cautious in how they uh, navigate the map. Right, and if you do end up going for a CC first, you're pretty much dead to a build like this right. as well. It's not that high of a commitment here to for, for Hero. He only built four lings, and he will shut down the scout as well, so that's a little bonus. Um, but if the opponent goes for that CC first, you can just outright kill them. In the end, he's just going to get rid of that. He has four links here, and Sharp's going to follow up with a one rax CC into a two rax push, and I think this is the right choice, don't you, Shin? Yeah. No, I think this is pretty universal, pretty solid, and will give him strong timings to abuse. And it does shut down any kind of greedy play potentially from Hero, although Hero is opting to go for this on base location third, it seems, and that is a little bit on the greedier side. It is my build of choice as well. I love to play like this, but uh, it can get punished. So um, we'll have to see if he can get a timing on... Is he going to place this? in the top right or this fourth location okay so this is interesting here this gives him a ramp to defend from so if he can control these three bridges and this ramp at the top he can use that as choke points rather than having like multiple vectors to worry about on the right hand side uh, the lower to high ground transition is a little bit more awkward to deal with uh, when you're playing um, as I was Terran. So interesting choices from Hero. I think as long as he can maintain a good, healthy game state and slow down this uh, timing with uh, some clever Ling timings and positioning, he'd be okay, but still can get heavily punished. If you go two racks and you, you don't get your two Sunkens out on time, you can just straight up die. So these Sunkens need to be crisp. Yeah, the Sunkens here are on the way and forcing out two Sunkens after your opponent goes for an early... Uh, Spawning pool, I mean, it just hurts that much more. And it's exactly the reason why he's gone for this 2 play, but a hero's gonna be, he's gonna be suffering for minerals right now. You can see he's got 500 gas in the bank, um, but he's just got almost nothing in terms of that mineral count. So how is he gonna be able to build mutas? He's got like one muta on the way? Three yeah. mutas possibly? This is the awkward part of Zerg when you play two hatch muta. Like if you have to make two sunkens and four links and speed, you just 
don't quite have enough minerals left over to squeeze out those mutas on time. So you're kind of like, you make like two or three, and then you go up to five, and then you go up to seven. It takes a little bit of time, so you don't have that like really sharp, like uh, pun unintended, uh, timing of coming in here and punishing the, the poor turret positioning or, or timing as well. So instead, we'll be seeing a more macro-centric style from Hero, where he's only making like a minimal amount of mutas to kind of have some map presence, some map control, and then he's going to drone up quite heavily behind that and go into a much more powerful mid to late game macro phase but yeah it's a little bit unfortunate but it's kind of a reality of uh, when you play too much uh, mute like this three racks here for sharp he's being a little bit passive right now staying at home and worried about the aggression from heroes middleist not realizing the damage that he's done right he forced a hero to just slowly increment out these mutas and I don't know if Hero had the muscle to actually deal with an attack coming over to his third at that moment. He hardly had any units, and Sharp just kind of let it go by. He built five turrets in the natural, or if I, yeah, five turrets yeah. here in the natural. He's built like another five in the main as well, and this is great for Hero. He's not taking any pressure, and he's going to go ahead and snipe a few SCVs. Yeah, well, the comsat timing was a little bit shallow from Sharp. He's kind of mid-maxing, made the, made the comsat in the main and then mm. delayed the, making the one in the natural. So it takes him a lot longer to identify the third base. Um, oh, he saw it. Location. He saw it over saw at it. the uh, at the center right with the fire bat, actually. So he, know, he knew about oh. it for quite a while. Um, but didn't push out. Then I would say that is a little bit of a mistake because also Hero is very well known for cutting his Mura production to squeeze out a few more drones at this stage. So... Yeah, a little bit maybe of a mistake here from Sharp, or maybe just being a little bit timid in how he approaches the game. He needs to be very careful. Now, only two medics here against this many mutas. Eventually, they will be drained of their energy. Just going to be going in, forcing us to him, backing out over and over again. Eventually, there'll be no medic, no energy on those medics, and he'll start to bully these Marines all day long. You can see the follow-up here from Sharp. Going to be a Valkyrie play, but we've already got the Hydralis Den done. And Lurker upgrade should be on the way here for Hero. Uh, I really like the timings that are coming out of him. He's gotten away with a lot here, and he's going to push that advantage as far as he possibly can. Yeah, this is looking really uh, hero-favored right now. I'm a little bit concerned for Sharp. He's missed any possible window he had of punishing the the semi-greed of hero, I would call it. It's not like full-on greed, but it's like a little bit on the greedier side as far as Zerg's concerned. So without being able to ident identify that and punish that, I think feel like he's really falling behind in this game. And inversely hero going to be able to tech into lurkers and hive real soon here so unless um, sharp can just come out onto the map in an explosion right now bully back these muters and get into a position i don't think he's going to be feeling very happy in this game for much longer mm, this is some great trading from hero sniping down a lot of marines sharp is having a really hard time engaging with this and still 11 mutas here i've yet to see any mutas fall and here's doing a great job of trading out the low hp ones and continuing to just hammer down this marine medic count soon we're gonna have a valkyrie on the field and that'll be the one moment here for sharp where he could potentially shove out and uh, threaten that third base but that window is quickly closing as hydras are making their way out onto the field we're very soon going to have uh, the lurkers coming out here to re reinforce these positions and I don't know if he has enough Marines to actually push out anymore. <laughs> yeah, he's only got one Valkyrie. He needs two to really be safe against <gasps> these Muirs, because he actually can. Wow, that's a lot of lurkers being made. So he actually is going into a tank push as well. He will be doing just a, maybe a, a single, uh, two, one or two tank push here, but it's not going to be strong enough. Like, Hero is going to bully enough of these Marines that there's not going to be a critical mass left enough to push back the lurkers. Like, it, he would just have to slowly inch his way across the map at that point. And he hasn't got vessels for a while, so he can't, he has to keep scanning for that as well. So it'll take him eons to get across the map everything just too slow here for sharp hero's gonna push right up into the front with these lurkers and dare sharp to push back i mean the marine count is so low right now he is gonna try and run forward and maybe uh dive on those lurkers when they're unburrowed but the moment that they burrow down he's got to back up this lurkers are buying so much time right now as the defiler uh, mound gets thrown down a uh, hero is just waiting on that next layer of tech before he ends this game because sharp is just not making any progress right now tanks siege up 
You may be able to kill a lurker or two. No. Hero two on top of everything. He pulls stuff back. And right as all of this crosses the bridges, I think this will be the moment for Hero to pull the trigger. He runs forward here. There's not a lot of area to run back to. Does a pretty decent job of evading the lurker spines, but most of the Marines are gone. And here's some Scourge to deal with the Valkyries as well. The tanks are going to go down to the Mutas. Perfectly done here by Hero as he clears up this entire attack. And he moves into this next stage. There's the Defiler Mound. This is just about over. Yeah, this is flawless execution from Hero, making a bad situation even worse for Sharp and knowing how to, like, make the best use. He's even going to go in with the Lurkers here. He knows there's not enough to protect this bunker. He doesn't even need to wait for Defilers here. And you'll see this a lot when Zergs get into this mission. They're this far ahead. They'll just just run in with Battle Zerg and not even wait for Defilers and put you on a clock of death. And unless you've got the exact amount of units and spells needed to deal with this, you're just going to straight up die. And he doesn't. He's got hardly anything. He's barely squeezing out units right now. And now here the Defilers are. So this is going to be the checkmate one-two punch. Doesn't even wait for the orange cloud of death. He taps out immediately upon seeing that Defiler arrive at his natural. It's the right choice. Game was over. Hero got away with a little bit too much. Sharp feeling a little timid to to uh, to punish there, honestly. Yeah. Um, not, uh, not really Sharp's MO. I'm a little bit surprised. He's usually you know, right up on top of every player he faces. Maybe, you know, that semi-finals between him and Hero kind of ringing in his mind, remembering uh, how hard it was to fight Hero in those games and allowing that to affect his decision making here in this game i don't know what do you think shun yeah no i definitely think there's some psychological psychological aspects to that um for sure i'm a little bit confused about it, I th it maybe he was just weirded out by hero and maybe thought that hero would go for a bit more of an aggressive style despite taking that um on, on base location third but i still feel like with his build order he should have tried to apply more pressure to hero for sure he definitely appeared a lot more timid than usual all right, let's jump into our next game. We've still got Stork in the background. He's going to be going up against Hero. Let's see if Protoss will last much longer. Are we going to get that amazing Hero versus Light final? Let's find out. Hero versus Stork. Man, I can hardly imagine a more one-sided matchup in the highest no, level be a historic game. <laughs> the highest level of uh, uh starcraft brood war i recently watched effort in a pro league kill one of his early drones and beat stork uh and then he did it twice you guys haven't seen that video yet um it was, I have. Effort's a monster, man. <laughs> it was a little bit rough effort is indeed a monster but uh that's gotta hurt as a you know a highly regarded pro player to get work like that that's um that's something else it's another is level that BM or is, is that bm or is that like handicapping yourself to like give the old man a chance i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was done out of respect, if that's what you're asking me. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> or re reverence for the, the player. No, certainly not. But Hero not going to take uh, uh, an L here. He's not going to handicap himself in this game. He's just going to open up with a very economical build here. Grabbing that hatchery right away. There will be an opportunity for Stork to maybe put on some pressure with this gateway first. Yeah, there's always what? that opportunity, especially with the... Yeah, he's playing ultra safe, by the way. This is what? like the ultra safe way of playing this build. Yeah, this I'm very is... confused. Unless he wants to cannon rush. He wants to cannon rush and zealot rush. He wants uh, to do both. Ah, okay, okay. Now it makes sense. Yeah, I was uh, kind of shocked at seeing the, uh, the the forge there, but he's gonna throw down that second pylon. He's going to set up for this. Cannon rush. As the Zealot comes across the map, it'll be really, really hard to get uh, drones over this wall because the Zealot is going to mess everything up. Throws down a third pylon here. A little bit of a mistake from the Hero. He's not able to get anything over this wall. He's kind of messing this up. Cannon starts. 
Dude, this is going to work out really well for Stork right now. Is this the one way that Stork could potentially take this game? He might have found that one thing <laughs> that he can do. going to be turned into oil today, saying... <laughs> the Dino Toss is back and he's got teeth. Oh, he blocks it. He blocks the, the uh, sunken colony here. He blocks the... Uh, the creep here, the, the creep second cream. Down. Okay, yeah. does he cancel? No, he starts the sunken immediately. Can that be hit by the cannon? He's hitting the, the sunken on the left. Running forward with the uh, the links. He gets on top of that uh, probe. He gets rid of the probe here. Oh, targets it down immediately. Second sunken yeah. colony going to finish up here soon. Will he target the zealot? Okay, goes after the zealot. Rather than the cannon, the second cannon finishes. Oh my goodness. Does he have what it takes? Does he have the uh, DPS here to deal with that cannon? He gets one of them. One more zealot shows up. Can he kill the ca the uh, sunken colony here? One more shot. He gets it. Six HP. Oh my goodness. Six this is HP is crazy. Insanity right now. Yeah, absolute insanity. Another zealot will come down, and he actually can flank and kill this sunken with both. But the problem is, that there's so many links here now, so that won't be coming eventuality. So instead, we're going to be seeing him targeting down this. Uh, he needs to kill his own pylon, um, so that he can't then shift click on to the 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 the. the he can get the probe out maybe, but uh, this is actually really bizarre. Like. He's gonna I don't get think it. he's going to get any... Yeah, he's going to get this. So, I don't think... I'm, I'm trying to calculate. Like, how is Stork actually in a pretty good spot now? Like, he's got his Nexus on the way. He's got three Zealots in the wall. Hero's going to take his third. Uh, I'm trying to think. Is this game reset itself to... Or is like, there a slight edge in one way? Hmm. I guess slightly... Maybe slightly hero favored, actually, because Stork's actually supply block. I would imagine that Stork would be behind from here. He does have another Zealot walking around the left-hand side. He's going to bait. Oh, no, that's not a Zealot. It's a probe. Is he going to cannon rush this as well? Oh, yeah, this is, is dirt. This is filthy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is horrible, but he might actually get away with this, man. He's going to build a pylon back here. He's going to start to build the cannons. Over at the third, you have to send one Ling over here. You cannot just uh, allow this to to happen to you. You you will lose this hatchery if he throws two cannons down. This is gonna go down for sure. Oh man, this is this is bad. Hero handled this uh, rush almost perfectly, but is he just gonna die to the follow-up? I mean, he might. The Lings are now gonna go back, so he will come down here and check. I think. No, he's not even gonna go back and check the Ling. No. Oh, okay, I think he's definitely gonna lose the hatchery. Yeah, this is rough. If he loses the hatchery, it's not the absolute end of the world, but the it, it'll be so stork favored at that point. It's gonna be disgustingly hard to come back. Zealots coming across no. the map right now are taking all of Hero's attention. He's not even paying attention to this hatchery and the cannons are just going to finish up before he even knows what's happening. He's going to end up losing this hatchery. There it is. He sees it now, but the cannons are already done. Dude, this is so bad right now. This is this is crazy. I mean, I've been in this exact wow. position before as a hero, but you never expect to see it out of a pro player. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you don't usually see it. I mean, maybe Stork's had enough of getting bullied on the ladder and now he's finally coming out with his real power level and just starts chomping on them. He's like the lion that you bother for a long time and eventually he comes out and reminds you why he's a lion. <laughs> is this really his final form, Stork? Because I mean, this is this is, uh, this is something else. We're going to get in there with the Zealots. Zealots are going to see the Hydralis Den. Of course, you need Hydralis Den. There's been so much craziness going on this game. Um, but the hatchery goes down in the bottom left. He's just going to remake a new hatch over at, um, on the high ground here. But now it's for sure. Stork is definitely in a much better spot than uh, Hero. Yeah. It is very Stork oh, favorite. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't even have a strong Hydra timing, even though it did get scoured because he lost the hatchery. So he doesn't have the kind of production that he needs to build a crazy amount of Hydras to overwhelm Stork despite being scouted. So everything kind of going against Hero right now. So he might transition into a much more standard game as a result. He does have a fair few units, so he might still consider some kind of bus timing, but I'm not too sure about that. Cleaning up these Elots is nice, though, at least. But yeah, like having this third so far delayed, like you have to think that Stork's in a favored position. Yeah, he's even going to add on a third cannon, maybe even a fourth. Uh, it doesn't really matter if he just adds on a bunch of cannons. Oh, the follow-up here is completely scouted. 
for uh, Gateway Zealot. This man is filthy. Oh my gosh. There's nothing behind this except for just pure Zealots plus one attack. And he's just going to try and bowl Hero over. This is the... You don't have Mutalisks, so I'm just going to win with Zealots build here. I don't think dinosaurs need showers, Sam. I don't think he minds being covered in mud, oil, and the blood of his enemies right now as he's starting to chomp through these absolutely highest echelon players. Needs to be careful, though. He is trying to pick off one or two of these Hydras without losing too much. Has got that fourth cannon finally warping in. You also can see exactly how many Hydras are chilling in that location. That's why Hero is trying to hide the majority of those Hydras on the high ground, and the rest of those Lings are trying to obfuscate just how critical of a force he has got to muster so that at one point he could just surge into everything. Oh, it's got drones on the rally point needs to be able to catch those and get those back to mining right now every drone is key so hopefully you can get those drones back to mining because so far i think there's two drones making their way up here yeah those drones are not going to be part of this economy and uh, it's it's rough there we go he finally sends them back he's not going to be able to make as many hydras as he would otherwise be able to and there's a real possibility that stork can just a move just a click zealots across the map and win spire starts okay he's gonna try and switch into the spire but okay this is interesting he's gonna stand on the top of the high ground here with a big uh, spread a of lings setup. yeah really great setup there makes it very hard for the zealots to trade uh, they don't have plus one just yet so he's probably just gonna wait for that still coming up that ramp is not gonna be easy for a store yeah, that's the kind of like positioning I would imagine like an AI take to kind of like counter you trying to get up a ramp, just having like the lings like perfectly concaved and like just coming around for a nice beautiful surface area surround to kind of mitigate the fact that you got a critical number of units here. And he's getting pretty good trades on these. And if he gets out with the Hydras as well, this is going to be looking pretty good for Hero. He is only on 36 supply to 66 though. He's desperately Oof. hoping that these muters will clean things up. That will stabilize the game for him. But he's got to live until then. He's sort of still be able to, you know, not take any critical damage until that happens so far so good for him he hasn't lost anything there is now a dt out on the map if he can keep that hidden from the overlord that's going to be great but he's actually running right by the overlord so if hero is looking he's going to know exactly where those those dts are and will make it much harder to get value out of them although that they can shut down expansions out on the map being set up by hero right now to make sure that he is only on three base at the very least but with this mutualist transition in him only going pure cell um uh, temple he's gonna have to start making archons i think he just did morph in an archon now he's gonna have at least, at least two to be able to keep pushing here. Oh, shit. And I got a big smile on my face right now because I think that Hero's going to be able to navigate this back into a win somehow. Uh, yeah, some way with these uh, Mutas coming out on the field. No real anti air aside from this one Archon. He's going to dive right on top of this Templar. That's a free kill. Gets rid of the storm potential here from stork and with a bunch of sunkins and a lot of hydras he should be able to deal with this ah, he's even getting on top of the dragoon right now he's gonna pick that off he's gonna get to work on these zealots uh hydras are gonna come up to deal with the archon as it comes forward as long as he just gets in the way of the archon here and doesn't allow it to get on top of these uh Mutas, he should be okay. He's just trading out uh, some sunken colonies right now. He will start to lose a few drones, but wait a minute. I guess he doesn't have enough hydras. Oh, he eats three big shots there from the Archons. All right. Yeah, two big. That was rough. Yeah, he lost so many drones as well. He target fired the drones on the exit drill as well. He killed a lot of drones and a lot of the uh, gas uh, damage on d damage on those gas units of the Muas, making them a little bit less effective in the coming stages. Although so far he has been able to redrone and force this force away, so it's not looking too bad for Hero, respectively, because Hero uh, Hero has the benefit of that right now. There's no anti muir defense besides these the cannons and Templars. So having to make Archons and have Templar left over to Storm is a bit of an ask right now from Stork. So he's got a little bit of a breathing room of about um, two minutes, maybe one minute, two minutes, where not much is going to happen. So if he can now use this critical junction of the game, completely stabilize himself, squeeze out the drones that he needs, make a few more sunkens, get out some critical infrastructure, maybe even get some lurkers out, and then he'd be in a much better position. That was a very tight hold there, but luckily those mutas survived and they were able to clean up everything.
There's still a big threat on the map here. He's created a few more, and he's actually going to go for some kills on some probes now. Start to even out this overall worker deficit that he had earlier. Dragoon's moving forward. He's looking for potential snipes on Templar now. Um, there's really nothing to deal with these, aside from these cannons and Templar, so... I don't know. Heroes still got a shot here. I, we're close in yeah. the in the yeah. overall supply. I was getting really scared when I saw the number of Hydras in that last attack. I thought he was going to have a lot more to be able to come up and assist that base, but he just hardly had anything. But he still managed to make it work. And dude, if Stork loses this game, like, <laughs> what are we even going to call him? Like, we can't, <laughs> we can't call him the Dinosaur Dust anymore. We got to come up with a new name. I don't know what is, what is more is more ancient than a dinosaur, Sam. Like big big bang toss. <laughs> I don't know. It's got a. I, I think dinosaur sounds too badass at this point. Like we need to f come up with something a little bit a little bit softer, a little bit weaker. Like uh, <laughs> it's like a wiffle. This guy's like a wiffle bat just attacking hero right now. Even though he's powered up so much, he's barely able to even deal any damage. Yeah, no, it's kind of rough, honestly. And yeah, against someone of hero's caliber, even if you are in a, a good spot, it's going to be tough winning. But there's not a huge amount of units here, oh. just some lurkers, and that's a beautiful storm. And if you can clean up these viewers uh, with some good place storms, this is going to be, this might be a, a breakable position for him. Yes, you might be able to come in here and do this. He's still got some teeth to him. Yes, he's a, a, an absolute relic of a player. That's why they call him the Dino Toss. And he was calling him the Dino Toss like a decade ago plus. So you can imagine that. Well, I don't even know what he is now, like you say, Zayn. But yeah, these Dragoons are are getting pretty good value and dragoons like siege tanks when positioned well can really hammer on zerg and if you get on top of the rally point area and you can start killing the units as they come out of the hatcheries and can't join forces with the other hatchery production you can get into great spots here look at this absolute beast of a protoss player he's ancient Sam, and he's chomping out an asl <laughs> champion contender that was in the finals what are we seeing here today he gets the collab for my goodness, is that what we're giving out the clapper for these days? That sort of cheese play. I am disappointed that we saw a hero get taken out by that type of play. After the hold, he held that crazy zealot plus cannon cheese from Stork. He doesn't send a link to the third. <laughs> One Ling will kill that. One Ling will stop that. Yeah. He had like 12 Lings. But he doesn't bother to send one Ling to the third. It puts him so far behind. Oh. We what just don't a expect miserable it defeat. Level defeat. Play, see, that right? is wild. So it's like, yeah, sometimes these weird plays will catch you off guard because because players don't do them, you don't expect them. So it's kind of weird how so it's like that horseshoe effect that Artosis talks about. Sometimes you do something that's so bad it's good, but sometimes <laughs> these pro players are doing it deliberately. They're doing bad things deliberately because they know it will work because it's so bad you wouldn't expect me to do it. Right. That's like it's really like a C rank build, guys. If you go on yeah. to Brood War right now, you log into Battle.net and you play a bunch of games as Zerg, you're bound to run into that at about a C rank level. B I mean, it's basically phased out by B rank, am I right? I would say so. I mean, you don't see it that often. Yeah, that's for sure. It's hard to execute. If you do get caught off guard by it, it can be devastating as a Zerg player, obviously. But that's the point as a Zerg player. You should be kind of dotting your eyes, crushing your T's at those very critical early points of the game so that you're not getting caught and you have got a Ling going around to the back of your mineral patches and checking to make sure there's nothing shady going on. Yeah, I'm not talking specifically about just cannon rush. I'm talking about cannon rushing your third base. <laughs> And <laughs> just building cannons back there <laughs> when you don't have vision. Like, I mean, I always have a link checking my third base just because I'm I'm so used to it from like the fighting spirit era. Yeah, it's like you're so yeah, you just kind of like have to, right? Like you just that's that's the one thing you do every game. You have to, yeah, because just like what we saw there, you, if two or three cannons get up and that base dies, you just don't have any production. You can't drone up. You can't get. Uh, into a reasonable mid game it's impossibly hard even hero can't pull himself out of that de deficit what is stork gonna come up with to take on light i was expecting a beautiful hero versus light game for our finals what kind of chaos are we gonna get out of stork here in this last game 
Carriers, please. If it's not carriers, then I, I mean, I just, I can't imagine what it would possibly be, guys. Stay tuned. We're going to find out. All right, here we go. Shouldn't think that this game is going to be crazy and interesting. I think this is going to be an absolute stomp. Who's going to be right here? I'm, I'm honestly hoping that I'm wrong, but... <laughs> Let's see what happens. <laughs> well, I did say one or two things could happen. Either he gets stomped or it will be crazy and interesting. So I, I do still consider the possibility of, like, yeah, Stork could just get slapped down here. It is possible. But, I mean, Stork... <laughs> these guys go way back. I mean, decades and decades back. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm super excited to see it nonetheless. It's, a, you know, kind of like a blast from the past for me. I would I would never expect to see Stork versus Light on a serious setting in many cases. And we're seeing that here today. And I'm excited for it. It's a bit of a nostalgic uh, exhibition match between these two players. And there's some money on the line and bragging rights. And if Stork can take out Light here after taking out Hero, I, I think that would give him a lot more of a confidence boost and maybe you know shut down a few of the naysayers and realize that maybe he's just not trying too hard on the ladder and he's like you know preserving his energy he's got that old man energy he needs to worry about right so he's like conserved himself and then he goes like you know full hundred percent when it actually comes time to it okay. well, <laughs> light versus stork asl 18 finals what is the over under on that is it a thousand to one or ten thousand to one what do you think no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, if, 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 if the odds were that on this game, I'd be throwing money at Stork. I'd be all over that bet. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I'm saying, what are the chances that we would have a Stork versus oh, Light ASL finals? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's even more. That's like one in a million almost. That's like, yeah, that's not happening. That's not happening at all. No, that is not happening. Not in this world. That's for sure maybe in another dimension but <laughs> another timeline another timeline well light here he's just gonna be chilling he's gonna be cruising about 3 30 a.m stork around 400 but he usually plays around 250 uh, once the game really gets going one of the slower one of the slower players in uh uh, the pro scene right now but makes up for it for with his uh interesting builds and his overall understanding of the game can he utilize both of those two skills though to take an advantage over light light obviously one of the uh, players who understands this matchup along with all the Terran matchups uh, at a higher level than than most yeah, I actually think Light will be one of the few guys not underestimating Stork. And that's going to be mm. critical going forward because the reason why some of these good players can lose to someone like Stork is because they are underestimating him. And he's a very right. capable player. Like, he, his level of experience, it ca cannot be denied. This guy was King of Silver, which means he came second place all the time, which means he was pretty damn good. Yeah, he is a very strong player and his overall like control and decision making is really really strong very nice control so far from light though just staying barely out of range of this dragoon while taking shots with the vulture that's not easy to do but we'll abandon that venture here as he just sends this out onto the map to try and obfuscate how much hp left on that vulture though it's getting pretty low and stork's yeah. gonna be looking to pick that off He's chasing it down right now yeah, it's good to be very active out on the map this early on when you can and you don't have to worry about any timings or putting pressure onto the other player because your range is slow. So I like the use of chasing down this vulture and maybe catching it if it does try and go into the top left to hide. There's a chance that Terran players might make that mistake of like, you know, not necessarily keeping their vulture with at least two lanes of retreat and uh, sometimes can get caught in the early game. I like, I like players that both understand how to keep their vultures alive and also how to hunt them down and have a high chance at killing that. I like the uh, SCV being sent out as well to just repair this vulture, make sure that it's at full strength here before the mines come into play. Gonna be just setting up very defensive and scouting mines around uh, to make sure he's got eyes on where Stork is at at all times and when he's gonna be taking these uh, bases coming up. Very good play here from 
light so far. He's not able to get in over at the 12 o'clock. Dragoon already in position here. Stork, nicely done. Taking out this mine before uh, having even an observer out on the field. Did he skip observer here, though? Or will he be popping that out soon? I don't know. I'm not sure if he if he's rushing um, Citadel Tech or if he's going just normal Robo. I haven't seen into the main base yet, but I would say that Light is in a pretty good spot right now. Like all things considered, like um, he was he was mining a lot earlier in his natural expansion, for example. Like everything's just slightly crisper for Light than you would usually see in a Terran versus Protoss. So we do see um, Stork setting up to take a pretty on curve third base, and he's doing it very safely. He's making the wall before even like making the Nexus. So yeah, Stork's going to be playing very conservatively, it seems, and very standard, whereas Light is cutting a few corners in the early game just to squeeze out a bit of a positional advantage. So I would say overall this does favor Light. Yeah, anytime I see the Terran player um, Light in an even spot against a player such as Stork, I feel like... Uh, he is in a bit of an advantage. He is so good at maneuvering um, from an even position. Even from a deficit, he's scary. But from an even position, I feel like it's even worse. Now, Stork is just kind of clearing out mines here. He's opening up lanes for potential counterattack paths. But Light has hidden his army out on the map. And Stork is kind of panicking right now. He's not really sure where this is going. And I tell you, if this army makes its way over to the top left onto the wall that is is uh bordering on that third base it gets really tough to break yeah. that position that wall right there is an amazing place to set up your tanks and it looks like light is actually going to get there unhindered this is very bad for stork right now yeah i mean uh, he hasn't identified this until just now and this does give him like the best chance of both engaging the army and also retreating safely so at the very least and he won't lose anything but stork's on top of things actually he doesn't get caught um, by the vulture run by while distracted on the left so not getting confused by the one two uh, punch combination of like so far trying to lay down mines desperately in the wake of these goons but so far stork's doing a pretty good job of skirmishing back and sniping some of these mines and not taking too many losses here so i think overall this is a pretty good uh, defense and deflection from Stork, but the, the game state still kind of remains more or less the same. Not not really. Well, he could catch the probe transfer here if he's uh, not careful. Stork uh, wisely pulling some of those probes back, realizing that there's still an active threat of vultures between that transition point. So he wants to be very careful in how he tries to saturate his economy here and not risk any, like, uh, some probes just send their probes to mine and not think about it and then just lose all their probes for free. But Stork being wise here, just inching out across the map, cleaning out all the mines and also uh, bottom bodyguarding these probes to the third base to make sure he doesn't lose too many of them. Mm, does lose a few, but I am pleasantly surprised by Stork's play thus far. He has really handled this beautifully. And the way that he was pulling back his Dragoons in that fight uh, over by his third base was absolutely perfect. Ooh, Vultures are going to get into the natural right now, and some probes will end up getting lost. We have a couple of Dragoons here to clear that up, but he lost like yeah, maybe three, four probes. I mean, not the end of the world, but any small advantage here for Light is pretty darn brutal. I was really expecting, I'll tell you right now, Shin, I was really expecting Light to set up along that wall with his tanks, mm. with a bunch, like a siege line over there and just put mines and then control the entrance to the base because I've seen uh, ter Terran players do that. Specifically, I saw Flash do that recently where he set up along that wall and then utilized, actually he had a floating building in that game, and he utilized the floating building to kill the pylons that were blocking, and then he ran vultures in uh, to kill off all the probes, and it worked absolutely fantastic, but Light seemed to be less, much less committal. Uh, he just wanted to kind of threaten there with the vultures and tanks and not really set up and take a real fight. It was a much smaller force and late earlier on in the game, so you don't really have the luxury of having that like crazy amount of tanks set up to make that work. You only had like three tanks there, so he was a bit limited on the resources available to set up something like that to take full advantage of it. So yeah, I think that's why um, Stork was able to bat away any attempts at a play like that. There just wasn't enough units in position to set it up or a floating building to take advantage of that setup. So unfortunately not able to get anything done with that. And yeah, like you say, Stork in a 
pretty good spot in this game, and this is what I was hoping for and what I was expecting. Like, I, I, I know a lot of players are, are bashing Stork on the ladder and on streams right now, but I'm telling you, this guy is, is more than meets the eye. All right, he's still got teeth. He might be a fossil, but he's still got teeth. <laughs> Even fossils have teeth. A third command <laughs> yeah. center coming out here. Light gonna slowly push forward, but he's taking some damage from these Reavers. Another good shot here would be big, but Stork just backing away. He's content to slow down a little bit this tank push forward as long as he keeps the reavers alive and a threat here he's gonna actually pull all the way back so he's just gonna give up this third base position he's gonna let light take that while he tries to take a base in the top left he doesn't really have anything over there right now he hasn't even set up a pylon wall yet so there's a potential that light could shut that down while he takes this third but uh stork is gonna start to try and stretch out into that top left area as well yeah and he's approaching this totally differently to that Zerg versus Protoss. This is very methodical, slow, conservative way of playing Protoss. Like, he could be taking this expansion, like, way earlier. This is very on curve with what you'd expect to see in a Terran versus Protoss. So, Stork's not, like, doing anything shady in this game. This is just pure, straight up, like, beautiful textbook play. And what he's very experienced in doing. Wants to be able to get himself into that mid to late game range where he can then start to do some late game. Uh, either a carrier switch would be nice, or he could even just just like um, you know go into like up to play here can be quite good on this map but even just shuttle play at these like three o'clock and nine o'clock and twelve o'clock six o'clock bases that the, the how tight that circle is it's easy to come in there with speed shells and just like storm drop or uh, what have you on those expansions so here comes some zealot bombs onto these back row tanks and now a big flood of infantry from the frontal as well stop trying to do a best here just bowl over the turn position there is still a strong ridge line presence though of about seven or six tanks set up here but the reavers are still in in the fight just for a few more moments before finally being taken out by light so this attack has um been squashed here by light but did reset the tank count a little bit but overall the trade went slightly lights way no pylon wall still here over in the top left going after the the cc right now can he actually get this oh no the repair is there he will be able to save it all done by light uh yeah that was uh an interesting timing there from stork it was all ge like gearing up to that moment uh the zealot speed finished at just the precise time when he was ready to go in he had that extra shuttle just arrived to set up for the zealot bomb but it doesn't end up pushing through. Light having a little bit too good of a position on top of that high ground and a few too many tanks. Uh, I don't know what Stork really could have done better there uh, to make that one work. It really, feel like, uh, really felt like a numbers game that uh, Light just had too good of a position and too many tanks and vultures to make that uh, happen there. Yeah, it seems so sane. And now we see a gateway is being set up. Oh, the probe transfer, though, being caught by these vultures. We'll be losing a handful of probes here. I think only like two, though, are going to be going down. So nothing too significant. But we're also going to be wanting to set up these gateways in the top left, get additional rally point going. So it doesn't really matter too much if the Terran encroaches on his position a little bit in the later phases of the game he wants to be able to keep multiple lanes of attack open and reinforce from both sides of the map and also have some high templars in the top left pocket to defend that position by making templars cost efficiently that takes so long to get templars across the map so being able to make templars in these remote locations can make it much easier to defend against the terran pushes that come later on he is still having a hard time protecting these probes on the transfer to this base in the top left he's going to go for it now again if light was on top of things maybe could snipe some of these probes oh he's gonna get a lot of these probes my friend tons of them going down right now he's gonna try and block with the probe but there's no pylon wall on the side here all the probes are gonna go down and this is an amazing trade for light right now getting a little bit ahead of himself was stork sending these probes before clearing out all the mines and getting the drag goods to position now he is in a desperate spot here Light is just going to power up and do a massive push, I think, across the map very soon. Yeah, that was a pretty big turning point in the game here, losing that much economy and maybe a little bit unnecessarily as well. Had the units in position to come and help that, but maybe we just have to suck up the little bit slower transfer. But he was already so far delayed that he got a little bit impatient there and paid the price. So really on top of things is light and making sure he can create opportunities to then exploit. And that's what you want to see from like a really high tier Terran player, both creating your own opportunities and taking advantage of the opportunities that are presented to you. A really well set up there by light he's setting up mines every time stork leaves an area 
is moving into position to set up more mines and with this fourth base coming online and an amazing SCV count that he's managed to establish this army is going to continue to swell and grow and there's not too much that Sork can do about it looks like he wants to dive in and maybe pick off a few tanks here and trade out some of this army but i tell you this is one of the best setup defenses i have seen for a while from terran this is going to be so hard to push into look at all the tanks above the ridge line on the right hand side the storm's actually getting taken out here before they can even be cast a lot of those templar get picked off by the vultures and men that was a horrible trade for Stork. Yeah, that went about as bad as it could for Stork without losing his entire army. EMP went down and Vulture's target firing and body blocking those High Templars to snipe them off very cost efficiently before they could even get in position. Now going to be uh, doing a little drop play in the 12 o'clock as well, but not actually getting a lot done with that. Is like a little bit too uh, multitasking out of his mind right now, trying to get everything uh, squared away in the, the southern regions of the map, making sure he's like macroing like a mad man securing more positions setting himself up for another expansion eventually stork is currently going to be going up to six bases so eventually he will have the, the macro to keep keep up with light but the, the reality is, is as long as light can keep growing replacing those bases he gets mined out he's still going to be in a great spot and this damage in the main base is the kind of things that he needs to do to both stay ahead in the game and like kind of do what he wants right now there's not really anything that can punish him there's no recalls to worry about there's not enough shells to do any like poor man recalls he's now able to harass while growing and this is the kind of the place you want to be in Star God. if you're going to put pressure onto your opponent while growing and expanding and macroing that's exactly where you want to be 10 supply advantage for light Chun this is getting rough Stork had some opportunities rough. in this game he uh, had a timing that he thought he could make work against this monstrous Terran player but he rammed his head into a wall and now the wall just got tougher and tougher it's like an anti-fragile wall every time he smashes himself into it it just gets stronger and pretty soon it won't be him smashing into it anymore he'll just be smashing his own body uh, rather than smashing through the wall oh my goodness this tank shot's gonna be huge seven kills oh my god God, that was insane. Crazy. A huge amount of damage and 10 probes have been lost here. Absolutely worth it for that one single tank. Drop into the top left as well. Going after the Templar. Two Templar are going to go down very, very quickly and a few more probes fall as well. Light pulling out all the moves here. The double drop is insanely difficult to do while macroing all of this at the same time. Still going for two drops and harassing, but he's making it happen. Yeah, I mean, Stork just fanning the flames of light here, helping him to burn even brighter, catching the shuttle down here as well. Everything is going well for light. He's just playing absolutely like a machine right now, and he's in his element. Meanwhile, Stork also maxed out, but not quite in the the, the moral position that he wants to be in this game. Like, he's, his morale is kind of, like, crippling at the moment. He can't quite find himself into a favorable position. Every time he tries to do something, he's just getting caught out of position by light who just seems to be everywhere right now. All the I's have died, all the T's are crossed. And now Light is going to be setting up for taking another base in the 6 o'clock position, keeping up with the macro powerhouse of the Protoss player and kind of shutting down any opportunities to get any uh, effective trades onto these siege tanks will make it very difficult to combat the Terran in any kind of frontal engagements. And without recalls, without carriers, I don't see how Stork's going to navigate this into a win, at least in the coming minutes. Yeah, where are the carriers this game, man? Stork, you really thought that you could just zealot dragoon your way to a victory here versus light? Better men have tried. That is so many tanks. Oh my goodness, the tide of red here is flowing across the map like rivers of blood coming up here that's a, a big chunk of tanks man if you get a few good storms on that it could be devastating but really how devastating could it actually be even if we have the most am amazing storms ever can it even come close to dealing with this army i just don't think so 160 supply to 190 things are trading out so well for light here i think that we're just about to see stork town he is just getting absolutely eviscerated
Yeah, the red curtain is starting to close on Stork's Encore here. It's not looking good, unfortunately. His old bones not quite able to keep up with the slightly fresher light, who's both grizzled, experienced, and still a little bit younger, a little bit more with uh, that youthful energy that you need to stay on top of in a game like StarCraft. And he's just kind of getting outplayed here, unfortunately. But I have to say, he's making it to a 20 minute game against someone of Light's caliber. Still a pretty impressive performance from Stork, all things considered. All things considered, I'm feeling a little bit robbed here. Like, <laughs> like that light hero uh, finals that I was hoping for is not going to materialize. Stork, you really had to do it to him, huh? You had to go for the, the cannon rush in that last game. And uh, this is what we get at the end. It's going to be a Terran victory. 99% uh, sure of it at this point. 99.99% sure of it, in fact. And yeah, um, I mean, those those are some great storms, but I, what what can we even say at this point? There's just way too much Terran. Yeah, even with great execution, it's just so hard to mop up all these Terran units effectively. Like, if there was carriers out on the map, or maybe arbiters to get some great like massive blobs of stasis onto these tanks or something, maybe he could navigate his way into a hold and eventually secure some kind of foothold in this game again. But as it's looking right now, he's going to be all the way up in his business, containing the rally point and sort of pretty good storms on these tanks holding the Terran threat at bay but currently even on supply despite drying up all those tanks we still favors the Terran player some more shuttles coming in to keep bombing onto these tanks so Stork is trying everything in his power to hold on just for a few more moments maybe he can mount some kind of comeback of a defense here but it's not looking good still there's still too many tanks in reserve making their way downtown to set up this contain in the top left with great shuttle usage and no glives here maybe something can be done but it's going to be a really hard insurmountable mountain to climb like you have to be like sisyphus level of mentality to overcome this sand yeah this is three tanks go down and five of the five replace them every single time uh, he knocks off one group of tanks more are coming forward to just overwhelm this position and Sork is starting to break out here from the natural, but with way too few units. He just doesn't have enough here. And I mean, Light's just going to push right up into this uh, top left main. Sometimes that can be like a, a rough move that could throw a, a game that's a little bit closer. But with this number of units, he's dropping probes on top of the tanks right now, dude. What am I seeing? He wants to splash down the other tanks and force them into an unsiege. But um, yeah, I mean, he, he's doing everything he can to try and hold on in this game like I, I respect it i mean he's, he's still even on supply he's not trading too badly but it's just so hard to overcome this poor positioning he has got some units waiting in the wings outside his um, third base that could come down here and help clean up but it's looking really difficult he's, he's trying to ferry them over with some shells to start bombing onto these tanks from that position to keep the some kind of defense mustered here but it's, it's looking pretty bleak there's only like one storm and like a handful of zealots to try and fight against all these tanks eventually though the other units coming in from behind maybe can start to mop up these tanks but it's still looking difficult you say he's got actually... some units mustered i only see ketchup here red everywhere on the map <laughs> what is stork to do at this point aside from just keep on bombing over and over and over again um it's did he actually stop the the mining at six o'clock for a second oh my 14 yeah, he, he, he kills on this tank holy yeah, Stork did make a play for 6 o'clock. He was attacking 6 while defending top left. So he did get something done there, but not enough still. He's 50 supply behind, more or less. Uh, he has got 9 o'clock starting to mine, but it's going to be very difficult getting these probes transferred over there. Like we see now, the interception has already occurred. Many probes falling to that vulture raiding party, and it's looking more dire by the second as this game goes on. Finally, some Dragoons coming in to help try and clean up that, but they're now, now going to get sandwiched by the rally forces. GG finally going to be called and Light going to be the guy to just seal the deal here, finally put this dinosaur back under the ground so he can fossilize a little bit longer and eventually be used to power some sort of aircraft carrier or something. Okay, Terran grabs the win here, tying things up in the point rankings for uh, Terran and Protoss. Still zero on the board for Zerg. You wouldn't imagine 
After watching no. the lineup and seeing the most recent ASL performances, like these guys are just not going to be able to take any points home. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, I mean, honestly, quite impressive for the the Protoss lineup to pick up a little bit of pointage here as well, considering their lineup. So, you know, all things considered, like, things looking pretty good for Terran and Protoss, and Zerg just flatlining right now. I'm a little bit surprised about that. I want to see a big change from them in the coming weeks to have any kind of hope at keeping, like, a, a seed in the finals here. Otherwise, they're just going to be, like, you know, confining themselves to a semifinals showdown and then steal the finals again. YSC really the the big threat here today the 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 talk of the town the 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 MVP for Protoss taking down yeah. some really skillful opponents and uh, in a pretty impressive way of course he did get shut down hard by Sharp but uh I don't know it, it seemed like his mental was broken there in that game um by the early damage and uh, I think that can happen to the best of them Oh, absolutely. When you take that kind of crippling economic damage or that, that vulture drop killing, I think between tw 10 and 12 probes, I think it was, it, it, and the lost binding time, it's just such a big deficit to be in that it can be hard to claw your way out of that game, both in terms of the raw economic curve of the game and your mental state and your psychology going forward. Because when you're fighting against those kinds of like deficits, you're, you're not just fighting to get an advantage anymore. You're fighting just to stay even remotely even. So it can feel kind of daunting where no matter what you do, you just kind of get shut down and like every junction and you're not quite able to curve out in the game and for an inexperienced player that's not quite at the highest tier of play you can just fall apart mentally like that you know, contrast that to you know what happened with hero versus stork right stork got a massive advantage in the early game and hero calmly looked for opportunities to try and bring it yeah. back and he you know he's doing really sick little moves like setting up a concave of lings with hydras behind at the top of the ramp to just take the best possible trade against stork as he's moving out with the zealots like these are things that uh are potential comeback assisters you know they, these are things that could help right. him to bring the game back um and he's just finding every single little advantage that he can muster here to try and bring himself a little bit of a, a better opportunity to bring the game back. That's that's a championship level player uh, for you. you. Someone who can mentally stand, uh, even though they're so far behind, even though they're having such a bad game and their opponent is definitely in a, a huge advantage, being able to stand up to that, really, really impressive stuff. I'm so sad that we didn't see Hero versus Light in the finals, dude. <laughs> Light, like you said, buried the dinosaur here, dug him up a thousand years later, and he's going to use him for fuel for his tank army. His mech army will be fueled into the next thousand games here with all the oil that he's managed to accrue from that dinosaur. Good God. Yeah, that's kind of wild, honestly. Um, he did have a good showing for the first um, two thirds of the game, I would say. Like, yeah, uh, it's only when he started to botch his uh, attacks that things went downhill really quick. He's not quite at the best level of execution with that gateway man style. It does require a little bit of finesse, and if you're not playing your absolute best, it can be very tricky to crack open those Terran fortifications. And that's why someone like Best is regarded um, so highly for it, because he can make an unbreakable position seem breakable. And unfortunately for Stork, that just didn't transpire. And there was no carrier switch or uh, arbiters to slow down the, the the pace of the game a bit. So unfortunately for him, uh, yeah, just going to be dealt with. And I'm really, really excited to see if it, how the lineups will look in the coming weeks. Because if they're willing to throw out free names like that, why is he stalking a motive in a lineup? I'm curious to see what the, the next week is going to look like in terms of who they choose to send out. Yeah, they really weren't willing to uh, put out the the B lineup or the uh, even you know the A lineup. They were only willing to go for the S tier uh, last season. I wonder what changed between this season and last season, or uh, are we going to see those players come out again here uh, for the rest of the weeks? So there's a great chance that we could see Protoss uh, in that top spot going to the finals. Another season of KCM, guys. It's only week two. We still got plenty more weeks to go. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you guys in the next video, the next week of KCM. That's going to come out in just one week. See you guys there.